again, um, we apologize for the inconvenience. We're still, uh, we were having uh, technical problems inside the session hall. Um, we would like to again uh, uh, recognize our uh, distinguished uh, colleagues uh, virtually present here today. We have with us Senator Amy Marcos from Ilocos Norte. We also have with us Senator Nancy Binay. Thank you. Thank you for uh, being with us and uh, bearing with us. Of course, our uh, uh, resource persons, I don't know if I should uh, uh, do it again, but uh, I was able to recognize all of you uh, from DOLE, from uh, DILG, from uh, labor groups, uh, from ECO, and our uh, employers uh, association. Uh, let me start by uh, giving a short uh, opening statement. The bills under consideration today cover wide-ranging topics from media and film workers' welfare, service incentive leaves, skilled workers' registry to discrimination against women in the workplaces. Iba't iba po yung layunin ng panukalang batas na ito, pero lahat po ay para sa kapakinabangan ng ating mga kababayang manggagawa. Papasalamat po tayo sa ating uh, Senate President, uh, Tito Soto, at sa ating mga kapwa senador sa pagbibigay pansin sa usapin ng karapatan ng mga manggagawa, lalong-lalo na po ngayon, at uh, bago pa man tumama ang uh, pandemyang uh, COVID-19. First, we have with us uh, Senate Bill Numbers 1820 and 2021, taking into consideration House Bill Number 8140, or the Media Workers' Welfare Act, filed by our uh, Senate President, Tito Soto, and our colleague from Cavite, Senator Revilla, which seek to provide media workers their well-deserved emoluments and their regularization. Second, we have Senate Bill Number 294, taking into consideration House Bill Number 7762 and Senate Resolution Number 95, filed by Senator Grace Poe, or the Eddie Garcia Law, filed by our colleague, who did not only work directly with the legendary Eddie Garcia, but also a popular movie and TV actor himself, Senator Bong Revilla Jr. Although we have already passed the OSH law in uh, 2018, we believe that the occupational safety and health is a continuing urgent concern amid the pandemic, not only for workers or independent contractors in the film, television, and radio entertainment industry, but also for all economic frontliners. At this point, we are uh, convinced that we need to uh, look into it, discuss and uh, debate uh, about it, and uh, perhaps uh, look into uh, what we can do to uh, improve this uh, particular uh, measure. We are also convinced that government's immunization drive against COVID-19 along with safe and, health, uh, and healthy workplaces can stop the pandemic. Ulitin ko lamang po, meron po tayong batas na Republic Act Number no. 11058 or the Occupational Safety and Health Standards Act which covers all our workers regardless of the industry at uh, mahabang panahon ho ang inila, inila, inilaan ho natin dito. Nasa Kamara de Representantes pa ho kami ni Senator Aimee ay pinag-uusapan na ho ito at kailan lang 2018 na ipasa ang batas na ito. Third is Senate Bill Numbers 425 and 641, uh, taking into consideration House Bill Number 1338, filed by Senator Pangilinan and Senator Revilla, which seek to increase the mandatory five-day service incentive leave under the Labor Code to 10 days. We, of course, uh, support this measure in principle. However, we also take into consideration what's happening right now. A lot of our employers are... Uh, doing their best, sacrificing, uh, uh, not, not to close uh, their, 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 their businesses, their companies in order to help our uh, employees. And uh, we also would like to acknowledge uh, these employers who are, or, or, or who I would say may be struggling at this point in time to make ends meet, but they're to step forward to give vacation and sick leaves to their employees above the mandatory five-day uh, service incentive leave under Presidential Decree Number 442. Nakikita rin po talaga natin na may mga employers na nakikita rin yung advantages sa pagbibigay ng uh, time off sa kanilang mga empleyado. Lalo na po ngayon na, na uh, uh, 
buhay na buhay yung problema natin sa mental health ng ating mga manggagawa. Fourth is Senate Bill Numbers 1380 and 2185, taking into consideration House Bill Number 6228 or the Barangay Skilled Workers Registry Act, filed by our idol Senator Ping Lacson and Cap Senator Bong Revilla. These bills empower barangays to create a registry of skilled workers in the community. Alam niyo ho, personal experience ko ho, nung tayo po ay nasa TESDA pa, ay kailangan pa natin na halimbawa, kung kailangan po natin halimbawa ng masahista, electrician o karpentero, maliban po siguro doon sa tobero na may nakapaskil na ad sa lahat ng mga poste ng kuryente, eh hindi ko rin po alam kung saan makakakuha sa barangay o sa bayan kasi wala po silang registry. Halos ganito po yung layunin nitong uh, nilunsad natin noon sa TESDA, yung uh, as, uh, TESDA Specialista Program, uh, kung saan ginrupo po natin yung mga skilled workers, binibigyan po sila ng nurturers para malaman ng buong komunidad at may market ang kanilang skills. At uh, alam ko po, uh, isa ito sa ipinagmamalaking proyekto noon ng TESDA na maging si Pangulong Noy Noy Aquino noon I am very proud. Fifth and lastly, ito pong Senate Bill Number 440. Ito po ay finale ng ating kibigan, Senator Bong Revilla, and Senate Bill Number 2093, filed by this representation, taking into consideration House Bill Number 7722, which aims to expand the scope of the prohibited acts of discrimination against women under the Labor Code. Halos kalahati o 50% po ng ating uh, mga manggagawa ay mga kababaihan. At uh, batid po natin kung gaano sila kabalnerable sa matinding epekto ng ekonomiya at ng ating lipunan ngayong may COVID-19. Kaya nga kung nakikita po natin ang pangangailangan sa panukalang ito bago pa man tumama ang pandemya, mas lalo po siguro ngayon na may gitsang taon ng binabata ng mga kababaihan ang mga ang kakaiba at bagong setup ng trabaho at sunod-sunod na retrenchment sa pribadong sektor. Again, we are discussing these bills today within the context of the pandemic and the country's unemployment rate, which is 8.7% in April 2021, which translates to 4.14 million Filipinos without jobs. Pero kailangan po natin umaksyon ngayon. Kailangan po at tingin ko importante pong pag-usapan at i-discuss ang mga panukalang ito. Tigit sa lahat, kailangan nating aksyonan ang pangangailangan ng ating bayan post-pandemic. Ang ating pong mga manggagawa ay dapat uh, sila yung centerpiece ng ating economic recovery. And I believe that these bills are, are aligned and consistent doon sa nais nating uh, mangyari at tahakin sa ating uh, minamahal na bansa. Muli, magandang umaga po at uh, pagpalain po tayong lahat ng ating Panginoong Diyos. At this juncture, I will um, yield the floor to... Uh, Our uh, distinguished colleagues uh, virtually present here today. I'll give the floor to Senator Amy Marcos. Senator Marcos, you're recognized and thank you for being here. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, we have a heavy agenda and uh, I would uh, just like to quickly comment um, on um, the uh, bills that uh, the uh, chairman has very um, um, ambitiously put forward for our agenda today. Napakarami po eh. And uh, this has to do with uh, media, by and large, as well as the Eddie Garcia Act, as it were. Firstly, um, I would like to uh, understand uh, very clearly the coverage by uh, all media workers and entities in the private sector. Ang ibig po ba sabihin online and digital or internet transactions, etc. kasama? Paano yung advertising below the line, billboard, outdoor, at iba pa? Higit sa lahat, nagtatanong rin yung nasa government sector, bakit hindi daw sila kasali samantalang media rin naman daw sila. So, isang tanong yun, uh, perhaps we can address that in uh, the following um, um, uh, testimonies of our various resource persons. The other issue here, I think it will be exceedingly contentious, um, and this is the uh, problem of the liability of media entities. Kasi baka walang pumayag na owner ng ating media entities or franchise holders kapag uh, pinasa na liable sila sa claims ng mga 
block timer, or independent uh, producers, regardless of the nature of the engagement. Baka naman kabahan at hindi makatulong to dahil uh, alam naman natin na maraming uh, samutsaring mga kaso na lumilitaw dyan, uh, may mga libel pa. So medyo mabigat yan. Ikatlo, ang uh, mahiwagang problema ng pondo. Siyempre, parati akong abala dyan, mga... Dakilang Ilocano, talagang nagtitipid tayo ngayon sa panahon ng COVID. Uh, meron tayong sinasabi na compliance monitoring, which is clearly essential. However, the uh, establishment of a news media tripartite council, eh, papayag po ba yung ating DBM dyan? Dahil pinuputol at tinatanggalan ang uh, iba't ibang ahensya, biglang magtatagtag tayo. At yung civil service natin, uh, ganun din, saan ba manggagaling yan? Is that going to be derived from government agencies or are we imposing this upon the employers? So this is the issue. Kapag government agency yan, mapipilitan tayo na tumingin sa SSS, GSIS, PhilHealth at Pag-ibig. Wala namang iba pa, di ba, Mr. Chair? Eh kapag ganyan, na may karagdagang uh, babayaran, abay baka itaas naman nila at maglagay pa ng supplemental uh, premiums. So this is the issue. Uh, I think we have to determine exactly where this will go. I think there's no argument or debate about the uh, intention of the law. As a matter of fact, I, uh, I uh, repeatedly stated, even at the very start of the pandemic, that media workers should be included under the rubric of frontliners kasi sumasabak naman talaga sa bawat border, bawat frontline, bawat quarantine and isolation area. So uh, to my mind, they should have been included from day one together with the risk allowances as well as uh, the other uh, privileges provided for frontliners. So para sa akin, talagang dapat yun. Ngunit yun nga, eh, liwanagin natin itong mga issues na baka maging uh, sticking points. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. That will be all. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Aimi. I have with us almost the same. I mean, the three points that you have raised, no, from government, media, being excluded. Um, if you re would remember during uh, last Congress when we were discussing uh, the security of Tenure Act, eh, sinasabi ho nung mga nasa private sector o gusto nating uh, tanggalin itong uh, endo sa sa private sector pero ang number one violator ay ang public sector. So, we'll discuss that later. Of course, yung uh, funding dun sa public information uh, uh, fund and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll hear our resource persons tungkol ho dito. Uh, before we continue, we'd just like to uh, recognize also Congress Congressman, Congresswoman, Congresswoman Nina Taduran of uh, Act CIS, who's uh, also joining us. Uh, Good morning. You. Good morning, Senator. Good morning, po. Good morning, ma'am. Would, would you like to, uh, to say something or uh, later, po, siguro, ma'am? Sige, thank you. Um, let's 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 have a, a, a um, siguro yung uh, nais nating tahakin ngayong uh, umaga na ito. We'll, we'll cover first uh, of part one, the uh, Media Workers uh, Act and the uh, Eddie Garcia Law. And then yung part two natin, dun ho natin yung uh, Service Incentive Leave, Barangay Skilled Workers Registry and the Prohibited Acts of Discrimination Against Women. So we, we'll start with part one, ito Media Workers and the Eddie Garcia Law. Perhaps if we could uh, hear from uh, the Department of uh, Labor and Employment and then uh, PCOO and uh, other stakeholders. Nakita ko po, present po, ang ating uh, kaibigan na uh, si uh, Mr. Dingdong Dantes. Thank you, sir, for joining us. I acknowledge you earlier, pero may problema ho kanina sa, sa ating uh, um, sound system. But anyway, I think uh, uh, Yusek uh, Arellano is also here with us, but uh, I was told that uh, Dr. Valeros from the Department of Labor and Employment would... Uh, would, would, would give the uh, position uh, in the stand of the Department of Labor and Employment. Dr. Valeros, you are recognized.
Dr. Valeros of uh, Dole. While we're still trying to connect with Dr. Valeros of Dole, we'd like to hear from Yusek Ablan of the PCOO. Yusek Ablan. Uh, magandang hapon po, Chair. Uh, thank yes, you for please. having the PCOO. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I am uh, with Attorney Perry Solis of the Presidential Task Force on Media Security. Uh, likewise, already recognized Congresswoman Nina Taduran po uh, of ACIS, who is our author uh, in the Senate. Um, just to address the concerns of uh, Senator Marcos, uh, the Media Workers Welfare Act po, uh, defines uh, media workers to refer those who are legitimately engaged in news media practice directly or indirectly, whether as a principal occupation or not. Uh, this is our definition po dito po sa House, uh, House Committee Report po, uh, and uh, it encapsulates po any practitioner, any professional uh, who is in uh, news media, uh, whether it is as a reporter, as a journalist, as a cameraman, as a gaffer po. So yun po, we, we've tried to make the definition as generic as possible uh, in order to uh, protect uh, every uh, media worker. To the second yes, point please, of Senator... Chris, one second lang. Uh, yes, Chris, uh, sorry. Uh, yes, I understand na tama yun. Pero, uh, Chris, I just wanted to inquire kasi maliwanag dito na private sector lang eh. Paano yung government? Uh, uh, yes, um, yes, um, Madam Senator. We, we will include po uh, the... Government media po, uh, with PCO being the supervisor, uh, subject to style po, we will include uh, government media. Okay, I think we require an explicit uh, delineation simply because uh, it does not occur presently. And in certain of the bills, uh, what in fact is uh, um, written is uh, merely the private sector. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Senator Aimee. And uh, I would uh, confirm what Senator Aimee made mention because when you look at SB number 1820 uh, 20 and 2021, 20, excluded po ang uh, media workers in government uh, stations such as uh, PTV4. So perhaps we could uh, also bring up the, the, the issue if there is indeed a uh, what you call substantial basis for, a, for, for, for difference in treatment between private sector uh, media workers and those in the uh, government media outlets. So again, please proceed, uh, sir. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, before I defer, if it's all right to defer to Attorney Solis, po, uh, who is the representative of uh, Undersecretary Joel C. Egko of, of PT Forms. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Please proceed. Yes. yes. Um, to address the other concern of Senator Marcos po on block, block timers po, uh, we have a definition po sa ating uh, bill wherein uh, if the block timing can be can be seen as a subterfuge po no to to hide uh, actual employment, then the block timer will be considered an employee of the uh, media organization. Now, if it is uh, legitimate block timing and that's really a person who really rented. A time from a media company, then he will like put you in. So um, hopefully uh, that addresses the. Uh, Mr. Chair, ang issue dito independent contractor and block timer hindi siya considered employee. It's a completely different relationship and an entirely different contract. Uh, why are we imposing the same uh, types of uh, obligations? And then there's the rather alarming uh, phrase, in addition, regardless of the nature of engagement. Parang uh, that just uh, defies what uh, you said, Chris Ablan has said. Kasi regardless of the nation of nature of the engagement, sabit pa rin yung station owner. Parang mabigat yata yun. Kasi as a matter of fact, di ba, nakikita natin na uh, the views and opinions expressed in this show do not reflect blah, blah, blah. May ganun parate, di ba? Kaya nakakapagtaka na sinasabi sa ibang bills na dapat regardless of engagement, parang hindi uh, ayon sa labor code, hindi rin ayon sa kaugalian ngayon sa media. Thank, thank you, Senator Aimee. And later on, we would uh, hear 
from our friends from ABS, TV5, GMA7. Uh, um, there are peculiarities in this uh, particular issue because, for example, you have project-based uh, workers uh, and all. No, so we'll uh, we'll we'll discuss that later. Sige po, uh, sir, please, if you would like to continue. Yes, yes, yes. Mr. Chair. Uh, just, to, just to address the concern of Senator uh, Marcos po, uh, we have received uh, inc incidents po where uh, the media owner uh, used block timing po to uh, uh, separate po employment, pero uh, it was obvious po that uh, it's really uh, an employee of the media organization. So we are seeking to protect those block timers po uh, uh, who have been set up by the media organization to be black timers but they're not really independent uh, they actually uh, uh, are regular employees po. so um we differ po, uh, to the wisdom of the committee to make sure po that uh, we are able to balance pero yun po yung pinanggagalingan namin mr chair na may mga nag-complain pong mga media practitioner na black time na hindi daw sila black timer pero they're, they're, they're being set as black timer um, if it's all right with the chair, may I defer to uh, Attorney Solis po of the Presidential Task Force on Media Security to elaborate po on this situation? Okay. Uh, sige, we'll give the floor to uh, Attorney Perry Solis. Sir, you recognize? Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Maraming salamat po. Can you hear me clearly, sir? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Thank you. Well, well firstly, with regards to the question, yung sa kung kailangan po yung mga government... Uh, media workers ay isama. Um, medyo magiging isip po natin is they, of course, being government, eh, they are actually being paid. May mga salary grades po sila. Eh, medyo mahirap po isama yung yung mga uh, government uh, employees dito sa media, uh, media workers app dito. Dahil nga po, first and foremost, they are governed by the civil service law, not by the labor code. So, yun po yung naging issue. Kaya, uh, ang naging uh, uh, naging uh, agreement na lang do, do sa, sa house eh, i, 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 alis na lang muna yung ano, for the meantime yung mga government employees dahil nga po magkaiba po yung batas na nag-govern sila labor code versus the civil service law and um, secondly yung regarding sa issue ng black timers uh, ang, ang, ang naging problema for the longest time dito sa Pilipinas is that uh, one of the one of the reasons kung bakit nagkakaroon mga media violence dito is because of the yun nga po, yung mga black timing po dito. Ang nangyayari pag every time na magkakaroon ng election sa atin ang mga politician mag-hire ng mga media personalities and then they go on uh, buying black times and of course dahil dun sa pagiging black timing nila eh nagkakaroon na minsan ng mga hindi malaganda mga nasabi versus dun sa mga kalaban ng mga politika. Kaya nga po, uh, iiwasan po natin kasi nga marami po namamatay o na, 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 na nagiging subject to harassment and media violence because of this uh, sa mga black timing po. So, ang nagiging tingin po namin uh, solution dyan is of course, since ang, since ang mga networks naman, uh, sa kanila yung franchise po, eh, sabihin po nila yung franchise, Binigay ko sa, sa kanila to sila lang po ang meron talaga dapat ang magiging uh, mag, magkaroon ng sariling uh, obligasyon dito sa franchise. Ang nangyayari po, through black, black time, parang naipapasa sa mga third persons yung franchise nila. So in order to, of course, to minimize yung magi, nagiging mga problema dito sa black timing, eh dapat siguro, since sila ang franchise owner, they should be liable for whatever content na ipapa, ilalabas nila doon sa kanilang mga uh, programa o sa kanilang mga, sa mga station nila. So, Pero attorney uh, Solis, yes, Mr. Yes, Chair. Yes, yes. Sorry. Yes, attorney, Sorry please. to interrupt. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, attorney Solis, please. Um, uh, Pero napakalawak naman ito, whatever the engagement, sabit yung owner, parang uh, hindi naman yata tama dahil uh, wala naman papayag na station owner na ganun. Uh, uh, yes ma'am, we, we understand for, uh, of course yung mga media, uh, yung mga media entities where, where they will be coming from. But of course they have to be also, ang amin lang naman po, nasa amin po, they have to be responsible. Who do you have in mind? Jointly and uh, subsidiarily liable? Paano ba yan? Um, Kapag yata i-define ng maayos yan kasi hindi naman po pwede understand 
na may pananagutan yung may-ari. Ngunit sa kabila nun, kaya nga black timer, independent contractor, hindi mo naman pwedeng sasabi, sabihin na ang bawat isa eh, talagang uh, uh, tumu sumusunod sa editorial line, sabihin natin ng stasyon kung meron ba. I think it's a little too broad. The other issue, of course, is that uh, you failed to include the government sector um, simply because we can't find a solution to conforming to the civil service and the government salary grades. But uh, by doing that, you're excluding a very poorly paid group, as well as saying that the government is the chief violator of the labor code. Parang mali naman yata yung dating nun. Uh, opo ma'am, actually gusto po namin islam na lahat ng mga media workers dito but yun nga po nagiging issue dahil nga po sa, sa magkaibang batas na nag, uh, nag-govern sa mga media sa government and as against the private sector. Ang hirap naman kasi yan eh, Ta gobyerno na yung uh, pinakamalaking uh, segment ng endo, gobyerno pa rin ang hindi nagbabayad ng sapat. Eh ang pangit naman yata pakinggan ng ganun. Yes, uh, I agree, uh, Senator Aimee. Um, it's, it's unfortunate that we are hearing uh, this, uh, I'm sorry, it's a, it's a flimsy uh, excuse that we cannot uh, include the uh, media workers working in the government only because of our uh, civil service uh, act. No? Uh, alam natin na magiging unfair po ito. But just to put on record, uh, on the issue of black timing. Black timers, uh, ibig sabihin yan, one who buys uh, airtime from radio and TV uh, franchise holders. Now, black timing is uh, legal and uh, this is encouraged to uh, being encouraged to our uh, networks and stations. But black timers must strictly comply with the general standards set by uh, uh, the franchise and the generally accepted and applied the uh, broadcast code pero pag once once we we come up with such uh, provisions uh, like this eh mamaya siguro we will uh, we will hear from from our uh, networks uh, later on but if we if you would allow me to uh, give the floor now to our uh, uh, department of labor and employment we have with us Asek Tes Kokweko uh, she's the uh, regional operation labor standards special concerns ng Dole uh, Ma'am Tess, you are uh, recognized and uh, please give us your uh, position on this. Dalawa ho itong tinatakil natin ngayon, itong media workers, tsaka ito pong uh, Eddie Garcia Law. Thank you, ma'am. Um, uh, can you hear me po, sir? Kasi na, 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 ano yan, yes, we can hear you, but uh, there's no uh, video. Sandali lang po, I will just, ano, say, yung nagkalok ko na Senator. Uh, wait. Okay. Uh, okay po. Um, there. I hope yes, you're... okay. Please proceed. Thank you po. Okay. Uh, for the Dole po, we of course support all the bills for the media and the Eddie Garcia bill, the media practitioner, the, the media law, other bills that are uh, on, on board. Uh, but we of course uh, look at all of this in terms of um, its... Uh, uh, on how the the, um, with the standards for the labor code as well as the safety and health standards. For the looking at the safety and health, we do appreciate all the safety and health measures that are incorporated in all the Senate bills. It also and, talks of the safety officers that should be present. It looks at the conditions at work and how best to um, address all of this. And um, But we would also like that it includes the OSH law because in the OSH law, um, the, this sector should also be part of um, the implementation of safety and health um, as provided for by the OSH law. Now, on other measures on uh, the security of tenure, we have noticed that uh, there are remunerations, but we also have to consider the freelancers. And we know that there are many of these for media po. And we also on hazard, like uh, for the hazardous workplaces and all the risk assessment that, mis that, has, that has to be done. I already mentioned that in all of this, we have to consider this is very important uh, as we address 
the safety and health for media in, in the Eddie Garcia bill. On the provision for insurance, um, we have to also, uh, uh, it should be mandated for all of these uh, workers. And um, on the responsibilities of media entities, the liability of the organization uh, and the block timers, we can you know that, that was already the, the issues that were being raised. We have to spell out the, I mean, what the responsibilities are for all of these entities that will be covered in the, in all the, for the media, as well as um, for the producers, for uh, in the Eddie Garcia uh, law. And um, we, uh, again, all of the bills do have its own strength. It, it, uh, uh, it looks at the different areas, and uh, we will so uh, we do support the example. We just have to um, long details, special implement all of the uh, safety and health and the labor laws that should be applied for uh, the media and for those in movie production. Um, or, or, or. What's that? We're losing you, uh, Asik. Because I'm not sure. Some, I know. In some. We're losing uh, you, Asik. Oh, uh, sorry. Can you hear me now, Paul? Yes. You're allowed. To, you're you're allowed to. Ano? Uh, pwede kahit walang video, so we can hear you if you want. Okay. Because we have seen okay. you anyway. Okay. Okay. Stop video. Can you hear me better na po now? Yes, that's better. Please. Okay. okay. So, like I said, po, in all the bills, the media practitioners as well as the Eddie Garcia bill, the Dole uh, supports all of these, especially because they in in the different bills they do have the strength, and we saw all of this po. Uh, especially as they are, we're looking into the different components on uh, labor labor laws, like uh, on the wages, the insurance. Um, uh, then on another bill on the safety and health aspect, uh, we are cognizant that these are all very important measures to provide our media practitioners as well as in movie production. We uh, we. It is very important, though, that for safety and health, this should be aligned to the safety and health law that we have at present because the uh, looking at uh, providing the necessary conditions to have a safe and healthy workplace should be uh, 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 of pr primary importance to all the media practitioners in the movie production. And then in terms of security of tenure, we do understand that it is also an important issue for all of these, especially because there are contract, uh, they, they are contracting employees, but this should also be spelled out. And we do understand freelancers are, are, um, the, are present in these occupations. So we do have to look at how best to approach and to provide the necessary uh, wages and compensation for these um for, for these workers and on uh for the responsibilities for the media entities and the liability of organization to the especially for the block timers we do have to spell out the responsibilities uh, especially because they are uh, there are liabilities there are solidarity liabilities but to what extent we must be uh be able to provide this so that um, the accountabilities can be uh, it can be well drawn. Um, uh, it, it can be it should be well spelled out. Uh, so again, we we look uh, we we are we are supporting all of these for all the Senate bills. But we hope we can it can be uh, captured into one major bill that uh, will really provide the necessary protection for media practitioners and the movie production industry.
Thank you. Uh, as I, just ano, no, I think Senator Aimi and I are, are we, we're, we're both waiting for a specific answer to our concerns. Uh, for example, yung ang, uh, government uh, media workers. Um, ano yung position nyo? How can we how can we uh, uh, come up with an alternative solution in order to address that uh, the challenge? of uh, you know the same the same naman yung ginagawa nila with the uh, private sector pero bakit sila mai-exempt pangalawa yung uh, binanggit kanina yung uh, uh, OSH law dito sa Eddie Garcia law do we need another law uh, may peculiarities ba talaga itong uh, 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 filmmaking itong uh, na mga workers in media when it comes to uh, uh, occupational safety and health standards because if it uh, if that is the case uh, what's the difference between other sectors of the society they might ask for 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 another specific law concerning us because as as, as a principal author and sponsor i i, I was uh, i was very confident when i was defending uh, this particular measure right in this very uh, hall of the senate na it's encompassing but uh, if you would recall 2018 naging batas ang OSH 2019 nangyari yung aksidente sa ating uh, ginagalang na actor Eddie Garcia and it looks like may may mga pagkukulang may mga uh, lapses may mga problema at uh, ito ba ay masusolusyunan ng isang uh, uh, batas na naglala yung tutukan itong ginagawa ng film industry so, ilang il il po yan dun sa mga nais nating maliwanagan sana, ASEC. Sige, uh, Senator, uh, Honorable uh, Senator and uh, uh, Villanueva and Marcos, ganito po kasi, ano, on the on the issue of uh, the government sector, it is true, you know, whether government or in the private sector, safety and health is uh, should be provided. And the, the way that DOT has approached this, because we understand, uh, Republic Act 158 has its coverage for the private sector and uh, exempting the public. However, sir, we are now revising the safety and health standards. But even in the old safety and health standards, it did not spell that it is not going to be applicable for the private sector only. Now, in the coming safety and health standards, which uh, will detail really the... Uh, all safety and health aspects in terms of all types of work, whether in construction, whether for those doing media work and the type of work, it, the scope of work, we are including the government uh, sector workers already here, Paul. And so we, in, in the standards, because at least there is, a, it's a standards on safety and health for all, It we have, um, uh, provided that those standards will include both the uh, private and the public sector. So, yun po ang aming uh, na naging solution dito po in terms of providing the necessary safety and health for the uh, both private and public sector. Uh, hopefully, this revision po on the safety and health standards will be out before the year's end. We are doing the full tripartite consultation na po because it is really a very it's a detailed um uh it's a it's a very it's a detailed uh uh document looking at the scope of uh how how best to approach safety and health in all types of sectors including for the media and uh for the movie production on the question ho on whether we still need an ed that was really po our um our first take here was that there is the Oslo, which really is encompassing, and which does say that it will cover all sectors. And if we look at the risk naman po in the movie production, it it, it is, we, yun pa rin naman ho ang sinusundan, sinusundan ho ng Oslo at IRR, that we address job hazard, its analysis in terms of the work that is being done on the risk and addressing the risk and controlling the risk on whatever type of work. So, uh, you, you, but when it was being discussed, they really wanted uh, uh, this bill to 
to also address us because now of the accident uh, to be very specific. But in if we really look at the whole OSH law, it's IRR and its implementation. Kasama na rin ho talaga ito sa OSH law, uh, mm -hmm. Senator, Honorable Chair. So, <laughs> kasama na, but uh, we need <laughs> si, si Senator Aimee na tato. Um, sige, I give the floor to Senator Aimee muna, please. Yes, Mr. Yes. Chair. Yeah, I'd like to uh, inquire lang. Um, are there any inspections being made by the DOLE in... Uh, the workplaces or sites or uh, venues, the destinations and locations for shooting and tapings? Yes, yes, uh, Senator. Uh, Ma'am. Kasi ang tagal-tagal ko nang uh, nanonood at nagpo-produce, parang wala naman ako nakikita ang nag inspect na dole. And, and for the record, Senator Aimee, we, uh, this representation actually moved for the uh, increase of the budget. I remember I we, we, we moved for the 200 million uh, increased budget for our inspectors in the Department of Labor and Employment uh, uh, last correct. year, if I'm not mistaken, or two years ago. Just Are there that. regular inspections or random visits being conducted by DOLE in location sites? Uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, Senator uh, Aimee. Ganito po kasi yan. We, we how, how often are they conducted? What's the schedule? What's the basis for the schedule? Ganit, we ask the... Parang uh, si Lisa talagang ganun ng ganun eh. <laughs> oh, alam ho, al kasi ang usapan ho namin with the FDCP is that they give us the 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 schedule of the shoots. And when oh. they uh, we will of course uh, uh, ask the DOLE uh, regional offices to conduct the inspection that is necessary. However, we um, it the, we are not. Can, can we can we have a list of said inspections? Um, I don't want to keep interrupting, but really, napakarami ng teleserye at sining na tape dito sa sa Ilocos Norte at uh, kabisado ko naman sila na in and out sila rito. Wala pa kami nakikita ng dole miskiminsan. Ah, sige po, uh, Senator, I mean, we will provide, pero kasi... Hindi po ba, um, ASEC, ASEC yes, test, okay. di ba, dapat may routine, ano, yung regular, or even random visitations. Tapos may complaint-based, di ba? Opo. Pag may nagreklamo na crew, halimbawa, uh, o cast, Opo. meron ba kayong nakonduct na inspection na yes, in response to said the complaint, for example? Yes, ma'am. There were complaints that were given to us. However, because of the delay in transmitting it to us, pagpunta ho ng inspector namin doon, there was one parang nag-pack up na wala na po sila doon. However, na, because it was a road... Eh, baka naman, eh kung ganon, kasalanan pa rin natin sa gobyerno yan kasi wala tayong grievance or complaint mechanism that's uh, convenient. And napakadami ng information and social media, bakit hindi sila makapagsumbong? Ang daming hotline. Um, At, uh, meron ho kami nasundan kasi parang nag na umikot ho yung ano eh, yung shooting. And then yung nung nakita ho nga namin, there were... Uh, nakahabol ho kami na, the, during the inspection on yan yeah, uh, there were uh, protocols kasi covid time na po to uh, protocols that were not followed so we can share that po with you pero usually ho, and then the, and then the routine the routine inspections that you uh, claim are actually being conducted do you have a schedule or perhaps a list of uh, said inspections because i personally in all these decades have never witnessed one <laughs> kasi ma'am, when we go to the site, I mean the, the office, kasi usually the, the, the production, of, pero where it is being done, we are also, uh, we would need the location shoots, we would need the schedules so that the dole can be proper, the, the coordination can be done. Ah, kasi alam naman ninyo sa probinsya na bubulabog yung buong... Yung buong uh, taong bayan kapag may artista, hindi naman kailangan ng schedule na isang kilometro pang bira. Makikita mo lang, nagtitipon-tipon ng mga tao eh. Talagang uh, nagkakaaway-away na kayo dahil sa COVID. Dahil ayaw talaga nilang umalis at super spreader. 
Um, so I don't think we need such a comprehensive schedule or such a long uh, um, notice uh, of uh, shooting and so on and so forth. Anyway, yes. um, lastly, may I inquire, do you have data on the work-related injuries or deaths similar to the late, great Eddie Garcia's uh, accident? We do have all, uh, the regional offices do have the um, the work related accidents and injuries that ha that they investigate. We can give you for a copy, uh, Senator. But if it pertains to movie production, I am not just that sure, Paul. But of course, on others like uh, because we do inspect for other industries like construction, manufacturing, we can give that for on movie production. We will prioritize this, Narinho, if that is, uh, of course, uh, I know it is also a priority sector that we should look into. Yes, if you could please provide us data on uh, work-related injuries in the uh, movie, TV, and other entertainment yeah. sectors. Um, the sector was known when it was still shooting and active for working beyond the normal eight hours, and Lagari was uh, commonplace, proper compensation was inadequate, and uh, no health or other safeguards were provided on location. Alam po natin to, as an early uh, BTS fangirl, yung K-pop group, nakita naman natin, pati yung mandatory two-year military service ng mga miyembro, pinospone, ganong kahalaga, because it would have such an impact on the industry and economic growth. Sana naman, kahit hindi kasi laki ng South Korea yung ating entertainment industry, kung saan yung contribution to GDP is greater than livestock, supply of gas, air conditioning, mining, and quarrying, bigyan naman natin ng konting halaga itong mga um, entertainment uh, workers. Yun lang. Yes. Thank you. Yes, uh, yes Senator uh, Marcos. We will... Uh, do this for we will coordinate uh, this properly in terms of uh, implementing for our inspection. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Aimi. Thank you, uh, ASEC uh, Test. No, uh, uh, I think it's important to note that uh, we wanted a clear and firm position from uh, the Department of Labor and Employment no, with these two measures that we are uh, tackling today to media workers, uh, Eddie Garcia uh, bill. Uh, you made mention it's uh, the Oslo is encompassing, but then you also support the measure. But you said it's encompassing; it uh, goes in, uh, I mean, covers all uh, industries, uh, including itong uh, uh, media, including itong uh, uh, filmmaking, uh, etc. Pero yung mga nagtutulak po nito kagaya sa kamera uh, at itong dalawang uh, panukalang batas that we are. Uh, deliberating upon, eh, they feel na kulang na kulang and there's a need to focus on this particular uh, industry. We hope to, uh, to to hear from you again, but uh, can we, as, 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 we, as we continue the deliberation of these measures, nabanggit din lang ni uh, Manang Aimi, yung mga artista, eh, nakita ko yung kaibigan ko na kasama natin ngayon, virtually present, si uh, Mr. Ding Dong Dantes, can we... Uh, uh, acknowledge him and uh, give him the floor. Uh, sir, you have the floor as uh, president ng actor po. Um, hello. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, Honorable Chair yes. of the Committee, uh, Senator Joel Villanueva, uh, magandang araw sa inyo. Um, Honorable Senator Marcos, uh, magandang araw po. Maraming salamat po dun sa statement na ibinigay ninyo about uh, highlighting the importance, of course, of, of, our, of our sector and our industry. Maraming salamat po. Sa mga kawaning ng gobyerno, magandang araw. Uh, Chair Liza, sa mga kasamaan sa industriya, magandang araw po. Um, I, I represent po uh, the organization named ACTOR, um, the League of Filipino Actors uh, that promotes the rights and welfare of individuals and uh, communities within po ito sa TV, movie, and radio who, uh, who have dedicated most of their lives to the media and entertainment industry. So, hindi po ko may nasasakop ng, ng, ng Media Welfare Act, uh, kaya magpo-focus pa. Para for, for context, magpo-focus po kami dun sa Eddie Garcia Law or Eddie Garcia Bill. So, yung mga kaganapan po in the, in the past few years have uh, forced our industry to, to really rethink its processes no, by, by placing a higher value on everyone's wellness and, uh, and welfare. At isa na dito, yung sinasabi ko natin kanina, hindi natin inaasahan at ikinalulungkot 
na pagpanaw noong 2019 ni Ginoo nga uh, Eddie Garcia, isang legend, legend. at uh, pioneer ng Philippine cinema. Um, nag nagsilbi talaga tong instrumento upang pag-usapan muli nating lahat ang ang pagpapaigting uh, ng ating occupational health and safety measures lalong-lalo na sa sense. At itong ano po, itong COVID-19 crisis din, it, it has also taught us super hard lessons about our well-being and our uh, responsibility to maintain a fair, uh, just and healthy environment so we can continue to pursue yung passion natin and to provide for for our loved ones of course. At uh, itong mga recent efforts po na to, um, have shown that better processes are possible. And the fact that we are gathered here today is a testament to our clear willingness to embrace a better norm normal. Kaya maraming salamat po sa pag-imbita sa, sa amin dito. Uh, kasama ko rin po dito si Agot Isidro at saka si Jenny Hamora ng, ng organisasyong aktor. At lubos din po yung pasasalamat namin dahil nung naipasa po yung uh, uh, Eddie Garcia the House of Representatives in November, ay naisumite na rin ito sa Senado nung itong November of 2020. That's why uh, we really deeply appreciate the measures laid out not only by the House version but also the two Senate versions that we currently have. So ngayon po, we have, we have submitted our position paper on the bill. Pero at this point, allow us to humbly reiterate yung aming uh, indispensable salient points that, that we believe should be in the final version po ng uh, Eddie Garcia Law or kung magkaroon po ng uh, amendments to the OSH. So firstly po ay health and safety. So in conjunction with the uh, OSH law, yung, uh, health work, uh, yung health of workers and independent contractors, they, they also tie into the provisions of uh, the basic necessities. At ang halimbawa po dito ay yung pagkakaroon ng healthy meals every six hours for adults and every five hours for minors. Uh, unlimited access to safe drinking water, uh, persons with disability-friendly and sanitary toilet facilities, safe and adequate accommodations, free of charge, uh, kung ang production is out of town, uh, isa pong well-ventilated and roofed holding area na may mga komportabling upuan at emergency exits, at itong mga rest areas po na to, sana shielded from uh, yung mga unfavorable weather or uh, undesirable uh, hazardous conditions, katulad po na mga mga lamok, yung mga dengue, yan, isa pong risk po yan. Um, appropriate dressing rooms with separate dressing rooms for, for, for minors. Um, yung pagkakaroon po ng, ng first aid kits. The designated vehicle for emergency purposes. Uh, plus yung insurance for stunt and other risky environments. So, pangalawa po um, would be under work hours. Ito parati pong pinag-uusapan lalong-lalo na po sa industriya namin. Um, ang aming pong uh, suggestion at recommendation ay sana po magkaroon ng cap on work hours for the welfare of all workers in the production. Hindi lang po sa, sa, mga, sa mga staff, sa crew, sa actors, pero sa, sa lahat po ng manggagawa sa production. At ang aming pong recommendation sa actor uh, as a product of our consultations ay a cap of 12 hours um, excluding uh, meal time. Um, next po, there should be sana a set turnaround time. Kasi uh, as stated po sa International Labor Office, um, the legislative standard length of daily rest is generally between 10 to 12 consecutive hours in national legislation. At ang aming pong uh, suggestion, suggestion po sa sa position, 11 hours po siya. Um, next, sana po uh, magkaroon ng uh, compensable waiting time. That includes pre, uh, pre and post-production uh, post work. Ayan po. And lastly, um, isa pinakamahalaga sa mga salient points din na gusto namin talakayan ay ang pagkakaroon ng written contract. At sana, ito ay para sa lahat ng independent contractors or freelancers across the board po. From actors uh, with, the, with the smallest to the biggest roles, sana po meron silang written contract. And uh, we believe po, this is to protect the industry from yung mga... Kasi meron din pong mga instances na may abrupt cancellation of work without compensation. Meron, sometimes meron din pong late payment and even non-payment of services that already were rendered. And sana po yung contracts should stipulate the production details including uh, but not limited to yung start and end of work, uh, the worker's job description, uh, the schedule of compensation and uh, other benefits. Yung mga ano, hours of work po and overtime pay, rest period, board and lodging, arrangement for, for work on location, um, 
And ito po, isa po sa napakahalaga rin sana na magkaroon ng clause regarding the independent contractors grievance mechanism na kanina nabanggit din. That's why, uh, ito po, uh, today with, with very much optimism, um, we strongly encourage everyone to continue working towards this belief that healthy actors and crew in a safe work environment will do phenomenal work in better more reasonable work hours under the protections uh, granted in clear and fair written contracts. And bilang panghuli po, we also beseech the understanding of the community of producers, uh, yung mga investors po, of course, the stakeholders and um, the homes of many of our ranks, yung ang ating mga television networks. Na isang isa tayo, we are your workers and we assure you that the measures will that, that the measures that we are seeking uh, will create a wave of great, unforgettable, and groundbreaking work from an empowered community of artists. At hindi lang po artists, lights people, set people, the props people, sound crew, the production staff, stunt actors, background actors, yung mga drivers, caterers, utility crew, and syempre lalong lalo na pati yung audience po natin. Um, the workforce is empowered by strengthening our health, security, and welfare Naniniwala po kami that the workforce becomes more efficient, the workforce becomes more creative, and the workforce becomes more inspired to do the best of its ability. Kaya po, um, sa mga minamahal namin, Senador, we seek your support by helping us create better work conditions through the power of your legislative mandate so that yung industriya po namin can continue uh, honoring our flag, our culture, of course, and heritage through our collective craft. Kaya mula po sa amin sa aktor, naway sama-sama at patuloy nating itaguyod yung kaligtasan at talento ng bawat manggagawa ng sine. Uh, maraming salamat po. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman uh, Dingdong uh, Dantes ng aktor. Hindi lang dahil marami tayong kaibigan sa industriya, kundi bilang isang fan, ay eh, naiintindihan natin yung uh, peculiarities at yung mga pangangailangan ng ating uh, mga uh, 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 artista sa industriya. Before we uh, go to uh, the producers and the network uh, uh, station. Sir, sir? And, sige, uh, Senator Aimee. Wala, sige. wala akong tanong kay uh, Mr. Dantes. Um, gihingi lang ako ng uh, kanyang participation sa aking ibang committee on economic affairs. Uh, we invited you your uh, online um, operation to uh, explain to us the ways forward. You are one of the only um, good news dealers in this pandemic. And uh, we wanted to uh, find out exactly how um, we could push forward and help your um, uh, business and other similar startups in the Committee on Economic Affairs. So please, uh, please come. It's a mere consultation. We're not investigating anything. The BIR isn't present. Yes. Uh, in the meantime, full support for the uh, actor uh, uh, proposition. Thank you. Maraming salamat, uh, Senator Marcos. Um, as we speak, we are also preparing our position paper for, for that, uh, for that uh, hearing. Sa susunod po. Maraming salamat muli. Before we let go of uh, Chairman Nading Dong Dantes, uh, can I just ask one question? What is the current uh, working conditions now? Can you share with us yung how talents go about their day, yung pre and uh, during this pandemic? Yes. Um, formal, sir. <laughs> so, Mr. Chair, malaking bagay po ang uh, yung mga naging pag-uusap-usap, uh, lalong-lalo na itong pandemic dahil, uh, syempre, uh, having in mind the safety of, of everyone, especially in the context of uh, COVID-19, mas pinaigting po talaga yung, yung mga measures, especially for, for the tapings and shootings sa pamamagitan ng isang bubble. So, ang ginagawa po dyan ay... Um, days before um uh, tinetest po lahat ng mga ano lahat po ng uh, ng, ng ng players at members uh, of the of the shoot, of the shoot and set and uh pinapa-quarantine po kami and once everything is clear nandun po kami sa bubble and we tape for sometimes 2 3 and minsan isang buwan saka po kami umuuwi so lahat po nangyayari doon and um ako i i i i, I uh, was part of a one bubble cycle in GMA and I really can say that they re they really take uh, these measures seriously. 
um, sinisiguro talaga nila na walang nagbe-break <laughs> protocols. And uh, I think ito isa, mag- isa sa mga bagay na po pwede po nating uh, may pagpatuloy. Kumbaga, kahit maraming mga bagay ang naantala dahil sa COVID-19, marami rin good practices ang pwede nating pagpatuloy um, because of all these, these new discoveries. And um, with what I had just mentioned, Um, I think it can really further strengthen, you know, all all the the protocols moving forward for the benefit of the whole industry. And, and I think all of us would agree of the importance of entertainment. Kami lang hindi to sa senado kung walang NBA, baka hirap na hirap na rin ho kami. Uh, pero ngayon, <laughs> tapos na. Um, one last thing, no, uh, Chairman Dantes, yung uh, binabanggit mo na turn around time, uh, kasi di ba sa mundo ng uh, industriya, especially sa mga artista. Sanay na sanay na sila yung 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 mahabang uh, working hours no uh, alam natin dapat 8 hours pag sumobra ka sa 8 hours overtime na and uh, uh, ano ba yung itong itong peculiarities ng uh, in, the, in, in the industry sa uh, in the industry uh, chairman Dantes na, tama po sinabi niyo chairman uh, and senator Joel no napakarami pong peculiarities and the nuances dahil Um, I've, I've been in the industry for more than 20 years and para sa akin, kung sakaling naging 8 hours a day talaga ang trabaho namin, alam ko na hindi magiging productive because of course, we also have to think about the investment of, of the producers and that's why um, through the consultations, alam namin kung ano ba ang threshold ng, ng, isang, uh, ng isang performer. Uh, hindi lang sa isang perf- sa, sa pananaw na isang performer kung hindi pati yung staff, yung crew uh, ano ba yung parang pinaka cap at maximum na pwede pa siyang maging productive and at the same time, syempre uh, keeping in mind, of course, the health kasi kapag malusog ka uh, kapag uh, nasa iyo lahat, ng, uh, lahat ng, ng energy mo mas nagagampan na mo yung trabaho mo na mabuti that's why para sa amin we we accept that you know imposible talaga na matapos namin ng ng walang oras kaya ang apila namin ay baka maaring ilagay siya ng 12 hours cap excluding excluding meal time and para sa amin kung ano man ang mapagkasundoan uh, so as long as um, uh, we have that cap eh, magiging grateful at uh, masaya na po kami sa kono man kalalabasan nito thank you thank you importante malinaw at maliwanag itong uh, ating uh... Patakaran. Maraming salamat po. Before we we hear from ABS, TV5, and GMA, uh, may, may we hear also from the Chair and CEO of Film Development uh, uh, Council of the Philippines, uh, Chair... Uh, Mr. Chair, on the, on the topic lang of uh, yes, the, the right. Actors Guild, um, I would uh, simply like to make a manifestation that, uh, in fact, the uh, movie, TV, and other producers um, are spending a great deal to comply with the present health protocols. And uh, the actors themselves are also burdened with the same costs. Um, I think it is important that uh, we find in the Senate ways to incentivize those who are concerned about the health and wellness of their workers, not only in the media or entertainment industry, but uh, throughout the economy. Siguro naman pwede natin pagbigyan kung hindi tax incentive, some regulatory leniencies, some uh, extensions of certain permits, and so on and so forth. Dahil alam natin yung gastos nila, yung delay, yung hirap, yung hassle mag document, mag-contact tracing, ang laking abala. So I think we need to incentivize in some way those who are complying very strictly to avert the uh, COVID-19 uh, virus. Sa ating pagdinig ng uh, 2022 budget at iba pang uh, pagkakataon, eh sana mapag-usapan yan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Aimee. And uh, we shared your, your sentiments. It's uh, really important to note that a lot of our uh, employers, a lot of our producers are uh, doing their best and in fact walking the extra mile to, to help our economy, especially at this uh, point in time. So we give the floor now to uh, Chair Lisa Dino Seguera. Ma'am, you're recognized. Thank you, Honorable Chair um, Senator Joel Villanueva and Senator Aimee, maraming maraming salamat po for your usual support sa film industry talagang um, 
lagi po kayong nandyan and we're very grateful dahil naintindihan nyo po ang, uh, ang nangyayari sa industriya. Being a producer yourself <laughs> uh, during the experimental cinema of the Philippines. Um, sir Ding Dong, good morning, sir. Um, and uh, magandang uh, umaga po sa inyong, uh, magandang tanghali po sa inyong lahat. Um, marami na pong nasabi si um, Sir Ding Dong Dantes and being a member of the industry, he knows best kung ano po ba talaga ang mga pangangailangan ng uh, ating industriya ngayon at ng ating sektor. Um, while we commend you know, the hard work that has been done to create the OSH law, what we, read, what we need right now is a sector-specific law that really addresses these peculiarities na pinag-uusapan po natin ngayon. Itong mga nuances na very exclusive po sa aming industriya. And... Um, um, upon our consultations, um, discussions, uh, participation in the committee hearings last year, uh, during the discussion um, on the approval of the Eddie Garcia bill in the lower house, talagang very eminent po na there is an absence of existing policies that specifically addresses um, hazards na nangyayari po sa loob ng industriya. Paano po ba? We simulate life. Um, hindi po siya katulad ng normal establishment na pupunta ka po sa isang um, uh, sa isang traba sa isang uh, establishment magtatrabaho ka pa doon na, 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 magtatrabaho ka po doon sa same building you see the same people every day it's controlled and you work a 9 to 6 job um, in the industry we are transient um, ang ang workplaces po namin ay paiba-iba Ngayon, nasa Bulacan, bukas, nasa Batangas. Sa susunod na araw, nasa Iloilo or sa iba't iba pong lugar. And that means we are exposed to different hazards every single day. Um, pwede pong ang location ay nasa ilalim ng dagat. Pwede pong ang location ay nasa ibabaw ng bundok. Pwede pong nasa loob ng isang um, uh, dilapidated building. And, um, and, and, and our workers are really... Well, not, I wouldn't say willingly, pero ito po talaga yung norm ng aming um, uh, industriya. Um, sabi nga ni, 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 ni Sir Ding Dong, um, our work hours is not typical. Um, as an actress myself, uh, I used to um, be part of um, teleseries as well. There was one shoot where ang call time ko po is 6 a.m., ng Wednesday at nagpack up po siya ng 11 a.m. ng Thursday. So that's 31 hours of work on one typical um, uh, work day for uh, a teleserie. And while um, this is the norm in the industry, we understand also na there is an absence of guidelines. Kaya rin po yung ating mga producers ay kumikilos doon po sa eh hindi naman natin alam ano ba yung minimum standards. Diba? So um, this is, has to be a, a whole of industry, government, both and private approach so that we can find solutions. Kasi um, uh, for the last 100 years, we have been working under a self-regulation um, scheme. We are working in silos, very fragmented po ang ating industriya, kanya-kanya pong sistema. And um, while we see in this, um, uh, different production companies thrive under these conditions, yung wala po tayong across the board na mga panuntunan, panuntunin at mga pol polisiya, hindi rin po alam ng ating mga um, government agencies kung paano po ba mag act I mean, I, 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 I know that you noticed po kanina na I was, I was um, uh, very much affected by um, what's happening po. Kasi po... Um, uh, right now, um, hin ang, ang hira po ng situation because um, we actually, Dole and the FDCP has a JMC that addresses this. It's like a transitionary policy that addresses the, the, the plaguing conditions of, of our industry right now. But marami rin po kasing mga nasa sistema na po, systemic and um, in, entrenched na po sa kultura ng productions natin na kailangan pong i-address. Like for example po yung sinasabi ni ASEC na they want to inspect. And that's true, they want to inspect. But because there is no, um, we don't know where they are. There is no um, standardized um, registration when it comes to understanding where they are. Ah, si, si production A, si ganitong movie nandito ngayon sa Iloilo or andito ngayon sa, sa Ilocos. Um, 
alam nila kung nasaan po yung pupuntahan at i-inspect. Wala po kasing ganun, lagi pong after the fact. And um, this is something that we can revisit um, as government agencies to see how we can be more proactive instead of um, being reactive to these situations. Last year po, we received, because the FDCP po right now has the FDCP National Registry and we have a grievance desk. And that has been a platform for some of our workers to file complaints about their own respective situations. And unfortunately, there has been a number of um, COVID cases where around 18 workers are positive of COVID, you know, despite the, the, the measures that are stringently put in place also by our producers. So there has to be ongoing discussions about this. There has to be a conversation between the production and the dole um, and, and, and all the players in the industry para mamitigate po natin ito dahil lives are at stake. May mga namamatay po tayong mga workers because of this um, oversight. Um, marami din po tayong mga nawawalan ng trabaho kasi po, for example, in the middle of a shoot, um, nagkaroon po, pumasok na po sila, nagkaroon po sila ng, um, let's say, seven-day quarantine na walang bayad, tapos pumasok po sila doon sa bubble na yon. Let's say on the third day, on a, for example, 14-day shoot, nagkaroon po ng positive case mapapack up po yung shoot, yung kabuhayan po ng worker na ito, a daily wage earner who's expecting to receive a certain number of, a certain salary, maaantala din po yung kanyang kabuhayan at kinikita. So, very um, complicated po talaga ang sitwasyon ngayon because we understand also how this is becoming such a burden po for a lot of production companies. But, there has to be a solution and there has to be this has to be addressed by all the players in the industry so having this having having the Eddie Garcia bill allows for us to have a reference po a main bible na pwede po natin pagbasihan um, moving forward po kung paano pa po natin paiigtingin ito nga pong mga polisiya na um, gusto po nating itakda para po lalo nating maprotektahan at para po natin mabigyan ng kaligtasan ang mga workers po ng industry yeah. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chair Lisa. We have uh, a lot of uh, dollar representatives uh, listening to us. Uh, we'll, we'll get back to you later uh, sa mga officials ng dole to uh, give your reaction. They've been uh, texting me. Uh, can we just uh, hear now from uh, uh, GMA, uh, Miss Delphine uh, from uh, GMA? Good afternoon, uh, Your Honor. Hi, sir. Hi, ma'am. Um, can you hear me, Pop? Yes, uh, okay. Ms. Lynn, you're recognized. Yes, thank you so much. Good afternoon, everybody, Your Honors, um, Senator Nueva, Senator Marcos, um, and the rest of the uh, resource persons. Um, I'm with the uh, GME Legal. And, uh, Your Honor, we, uh, of course, we support um, any legislation that is intended to. Um, uh, protect our workers, our major workers. And uh, as far as the Eddie Garcia bill is concerned, and even the Major Workers Act, um, we believe that, of course, a law uh, is important to help our um, colleagues. But as far as the bill is concerned, it is the position of uh, GMA that, um, as mentioned earlier by our representative from Dole, that um, RA 11058, or the OSH law, is already an encompassing end of law. And what is only needed um, is for it to um, um, to take into consideration the peculiarities of uh, the entertainment industry, um, so that um, it is our proposal for uh, the Department of Labor uh, to come up with or adopt, or promulgate rules and regulations that are specific to the um, entertainment and media industry. Um, we have, in fact, your honors, already submitted our position paper uh, with regard to the bill, uh, specifically Senate Bill 294. Um, however, if you will just allow us, we would just like to mention a um, few observations with regard to this uh, proposed measure. Um, we have heard already about certain concerns um, um, that our colleagues in the media have uh, uh, are currently experiencing in, uh, and um, uh, given the 
situation right now uh, with the COVID uh, uh, pandemic. Uh, we appreciate the recognition uh, given by um, Mr. Dingdong Dantes that uh, the network takes seriously its measures uh, um, in place uh, in its production to ensure that its workers, uh, its staff, its crew are uh, very much um, safe uh, and protected during the production. Uh, we would we would appreciate uh, our legislators to um, recognize also the realities of production, especially with regard to the working hours. Um, although there was a mention uh, of the situation of our artists, mentioned also by uh, Chair Lisa and Mr. D Dantes, but maybe we should also be mindful of the um, situation of our news crew. Um, we understand the need for a uh, for a limitation uh, or the proposal for a cap on the working hours uh, as far as the entertainment industry is concerned. However, the reality of our news coverages or public or documentaries make it difficult for the production for our crew to um, uh, maintain the 12 hours. Can you imagine um, uh, our news crew covering um, uh, um, um, uh, fire disaster, a flood, a typhoon? and you set a cap for 12 hours um the reality here is it cannot we cannot stop production because we need to continue covering in the interest of the public so we just hope that such situation such peculiarity also will be considered by our um by our legislators uh, because we're not only talking about entertainment here but we're also talking about documentaries and news coverages so, um, um, when you speak of working hours and even the benefits, as well as other the facilities. There was also mention of uh, accommodations. Of course, we do try to um, uh, provide that uh, for our crew, but, in some, but we cannot do that in all instances. Admittedly, especially when, um, when we go to the areas, uh, when we do documentaries on um, areas, far flung areas, where um, such facilities are unavailable. Okay. Now, it's not because GMA um, does not want to comply, but the situation makes it difficult, makes it impossible, makes it which we understand at our law and our legislators will also be um, uh, considerate and cons will take that into consideration. Um, there was mention, Your Honor, about the block liability for block timers. Um, it was good, uh, Your Honors, that it was mentioned um, that uh, that that would uh, imposing such a liability on franchise holders or the networks for the content aired by its block timers. Well, uh, when in fact block timing is an encouraged practice, um, especially since um, the air it's only the airtime uh, we are providing airtime for our block timers and content is generally within the purview already of our uh, block timers and there are indeed contracts which. Um, uh, make them, uh, which uh, impose on them the obligation, of course, to observe strict standards of the station, as well That's as right. uh, the law, of course, like MTRCB, uh, in um, in the content that they will be airing in our programs. But maybe we should also keep in mind that while they can be, um, uh, there are live programs, live block timers. So it uh, the challenge there, um, if. The liability will be passed on to the franchise franchise holders or the stations. Might be unfair, um, given that it has no control over such content aired by its block timers. And one last point, if I may, Your Honor, it's with regard to the uh, proposed penalty under the Senate bill. Um, we and um, our we understand that the intention here is to strengthen our OSH law to ensure that safety and health of our workers and um, RA 11058 has imposed an administrative fine for violations committed by the producers and um, uh, the employers. Maybe uh, whereas uh, 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 the proposed bill imposes um, uh, criminal uh, sanction, maybe uh, we, we are proposing that for standardization and given also the intent behind uh, this proposal, maybe uh, uh, we can uh, adopt the admin yeah. penalty, which is uh, uh, stated in the uh, current law, RA 11058. That will be all, Your Honor. Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to share our observations and comments. Thank you, uh, Ms. Lynn Delphine, and uh, 
I haven't seen in the read your position paper, but uh, perhaps we could also again uh, emphasize the importance of giving us your position and how we'll be able to improve uh, the implementation of OSH and at the same time this uh, challenge of uh, protecting our uh, media workers' uh, welfare. Uh, at this juncture, let me give the floor to uh, Attorney. This is our next Attorney Uy of ABS-CBN. Attorney Uy, you're recognized. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, ABS-CBN, uh, uh, as a member of uh, the KBP, uh, is in coordinating with the KBP on its comments regarding the various bills that are pending before the committee. Uh, and uh, we would like to respectfully request that uh, we be allowed to submit our comments and positions uh, through the KBP. Okay. Uh, per perhaps if I could ask uh, Mr. Uh, I mean, Attorney uh, Uy and, uh, and Ms. Uh, Delphine, with regard to your TV productions today, uh, of course, we're all operating in a new, nor new normal uh, set, set up. Ano ho yung mga changes that you have to make other than, other than dun sa bubble na, na tinatawag? And uh, gaano ho kalaki yung uh, uh, increase in cost in uh, production because of this uh, new normal? Attorney Uy or uh, Ms. Delphine? Mr. Chairman, this is uh, Maxim Uy. Uh, so far as ABS-CBN is concerned, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I do not have personal knowledge of the of the matters that the chair asked about. Uh, and I, I don't believe that... Uh, or perhaps if you could uh, just give us a copy, uh, talk to your, your finance officer, Sigura, sir. Um, anyway, can, can we hear from Attorney Arcangel of uh, TV5? Representing TV5, uh, we have Attorney Arcangel. Mr. Chair, good morning. Hi, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chair. This is uh, Zion Vargas, who will be speaking for TV5. Okay, sorry. Uh, please, please proceed. You're recognized. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, first, uh, Mr. Chair, would like to manifest that we only received the invite last Friday, and given the implications of the bills that are being discussed, uh, we would like to ask for more time to submit our position paper for a formal uh, responses to the provisions in the bills. Um, that said, we would like to highlight uh, two points. Um, first, we, we've always been consistent in underscoring the importance of the different treatment between talent and uh, regular employees. And I think the stakeholders in the media industry have been consistent to that point, even in the lower house deliberations for the bill introduced by Representative Taduran. Um, and that point relates to another consideration. As you mentioned earlier, a lot of workers have lost their jobs given the pandemic crisis. And I think the same goes for business establishments. Our, con our main consideration is that there is a very big capital impact given the provisions of the bills under discussion. And um, it's more of the viability of the implementation. But if we will push through with the bills as worded, there are more production outfits among Cerrado and even media establishments because of the cost impact, which was also mentioned by the Honorable uh, Senator Marcus earlier as a consideration. That's all for us, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, uh, ma'am. Um, 
We, we, we'd, we'd like to give the floor to uh, Congresswoman Nina uh, Taduran, uh, our counterpart from the House of Representatives. Ma'am, you're recognized. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. You can, uh, you'd be able to clarify some of the things that we have raised here together with Senator Marcos. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And uh, First of all, uh, just uh, allow me first to thank you once again, uh, our counterpart, Mr. Chair, uh, Senator Joel Villanueva, Senator Amy Marcos, and uh, to all of us here and to our esteemed counterparts and colleagues in the Senate and uh, to the Presidential Task Force on Media Security na since day one, uh, dito po sa pet bill ko eh, uh, Anjan po sila si Yusek Joel Edgo, si Yusek uh, Chris Ablan, and si uh, PCOO Secretary Martin Andanar. And uh, it is not long ago that we uh, already celebrated the victory of passing on third and final reading of this House bill. And uh, uh, again, uh, just allow me to send my warm and utmost uh, gratitude to those who made it possible. So uh, again, Mr. Chair, gusto ko lang uh, sabihin na. Uh, uh, I uh, modesty aside, I've been in the industry. I've been in the media industry for 31 years. So allow me po na ikwento ko sa inyo kung ano yung yung kaya kami nag come up with this bill because um yung sinasabi nga kaya hindi included yung government. Uh, with due respect to uh, Honorable Senator Amy Marcos because uh, it's already covered by the civil service law. And uh, yung government po may sweldo, pero ang mga taga-private sector, especially po yung nasa print, literal po, uh, Mr. Chair, na wala silang sweldo, only allowances yung natatanggap nila. And of course, ayaw na po natin yung, uh, even before the pandemic, eh, uh, it's been the practice na walang social benefits, and then talent forever, three months, three months na, uh, what's this, uh, contractual, Three months, three months yung kontrata. So ayun na nating mangyari yon. That's why we have to protect uh, uh, yung ating mga media workers. Especially po yung after the six months, kailangan naman ba regular sila. And then uh, kailangan naman meron silang social benefits, the SSS, the field health, especially now na nasa health crisis tayo. Walang matakbuhan yung ating mga media workers. And then uh, also... Uh, Kailangan naman meron silang hazard pay. So uh, what we are asking dun sa ating mga media owners, we are not anti-media owners here. In fact, ang gusto lang po natin is uh, magkaroon talaga ng ano eh, um, uh, especially those na nasa uh, mga print na wala silang sweldo, kaya sila nagiging, uh, sorry for the word, nagiging beholden sila uh, sa mga uh, iba nating mga uh, politiko or because wala po talaga silang sweldong natatanggap. So it's about time na mabigyan naman natin sila ng uh, tamang pasweldo which is ang uh, gusto lang naman natin is yung sa uh, regional tripartite wage board kung ano po yung uh, nasa nakasaad sa batas yun lang naman po ang dapat nating ibigay sa kanila. So uh, in uh, in the uh, tawag nito, dun susagot ko po dun sa kay Ms. Zonel Vargas ng TV5, ang gusto lang naman po natin talaga is uh, even before the pandemic, it's been the practice na kasi sa ating sa media industry. So gusto nating makorek na po ito, ma-address ito mga problema ng ating mga media workers. Sabi nga po ni Chairperson na uh, Lisa Dino Sigera na uh, napaka-hazardous po ng trabaho namin, uh, lalo na po ang uh, nasa media and sa entertainment industry. Dahil lalo po ngayon may pandemic, araw-araw andyan po yung kalaban natin na hindi natin nakikita. And yet, wala po yung overtime pay, wala pong hazard pay yan. So it's about time na ibigay na natin ito sa kanila. So yun lang naman po, uh, Mr. Chair, ang gusto kong ipunto. Uh, and ang bola po is nasa sa inyo na dyan sa Senado, the 
That's why uh, sa ngayon pa lamang gusto ko na rin pong magpasalamat sa inyo dahil mismo si Senate President Tito Soto, si Tito Sen, si Senator Revilla, and kayo po Mr. Chair, si uh, Ma'am Aimee Marcos, si Senator Aimee. Andiyan po kayong lahat para sumuporta nga po sa aming uh, bills, sa aming measures sa media workers and sa entertainment industry. Once again, maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you. Thank you, Congresswoman uh, Taduran. Perhaps if you could also uh, uh, enlighten us, kasi uh, we, we have been asking, yung, for example, yung funding uh, with regard to the uh, public information fund. And at the same time, for example, ma'am, uh, do, do we have a data as to how many media workers uh, we have right now? And uh, ilan yung sa private, ilan yung uh, sa public? And doon sa public, ilan yung until now ay contractual. And I, I would say this from based on my personal experience when I was with DESDA, I remember encountering mga workers there, 10, 12 years na nandun na sa gobyerno, and yet they're still contract, uh, they're still job in, in, in that, uh, job order uh, status. no So ito, siyempre gusto nating uh, mawala ito. In fact, I have several bills filed here in the Senate na pagka Naka ilang taon ka na dito sa gobyerno, five years, may application ka na yung transition to be talagang uh, gumawa ang, uh, ang, ng, ng paraan, ang pamahalaan na ma-regularize sila. Kasi under the law, pag, pag six months, after six months, dapat regular ka na. No? So these are the things na gusto nating uh, tignan kasi at the end of the day, we have to also be practical. Meron ba tayong uh, enough funds uh, 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 na, na, na para irregularize sila at... Uh, Siyempre, at the end of the day, we are all supporting itong uh, uh, Media Welfare Act. That is correct, uh, Mr. Chair. Actually po, uh, I think Attorney Perry Solis uh, can answer to that in regards to ilan po yung mga media workers natin na nasa private sector and nasa government sector. But uh, as of now po, uh, Mr. Chair, ang uh, pinaka-concern lang po talaga natin is that, sabi ko nga po, even before the pandemic, this has been the practice. And then the question is, anong pagkakaiba nito sa ibang uh, labor sector? Uh, why is this so special at the media workers and the entertainment industry? Because po, this is so special dahil uh, ang masasabi ko po, yung mga media workers is really underpaid but yet overworked. And andun po yung risk sa trabaho nila because uh, ito po yung mga pinapadala sa, alibawa po, merong bakbakan sa Mindanao, sila po yung mga matatawag din natin mga frontliners, especially po kapag uh, ganito pong may health crisis, sila po talaga yung nasa panganib. So, importante po talagang maibigay natin yung nararapat na sa kanila. Kasi, sabi ko nga, yung mga security guards, yung mga const construction workers, na ipinaglalaban ng mga media workers yung kanilang mga karapatan. And yet, uh, it's it's very ironic na mismo itong nasa entertainment and nasa media ang hindi po sila nakakaranas ng social benefits na dapat po eh, nakasaad po yun sa ating labor code. Sila po yung hindi nakakaranas na ma-regular. Sila din po yung walang security of tenure. Sila po yung uh, five years na sa kumpanya, sa print na pinagtatrabawan nila or sa media entity na pinaga, pinapasukan nila and yet hindi pa rin po sila regular. So I think Attorney Perry, uh, Perry Solis, if you have uh, the data na with you, yung, uh, kasi I was only told kanina lang, uh, Mr. Chair. No problem, uh, Congressman. I, I, uh, I was given a uh, data coming from Philippine Statistics Authority. The information and communication sector employs an estimated 400 46,000 workers, while the arts, entertainment, and recreation sector employs an estimated 331,000 workers. This is as of March 2021. 20, uh, we don't have how many workers are there in the government. No? Kasi, for example, kanina we were tackling on the issue as to whether or not yung, 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 yung nasa public sector ay, uh, ay kasama dito sa media uh, workers sa uh, welfare, um, hindi natin alam. Uh, we wanted to find out ilan ba yung nasa, nasa public sector na media workers at uh, how much are we, are we looking at dun sa ma-regularize man lang yung mga matatagal nang nandyan uh, as part of this uh, measure. 
Do, do we have that data, Attorney uh, Solis? Hi. Hello po, uh, good afternoon. Actually, we asked the Department of Labor regarding yung specific numbers. Ng, ng, we asked the Department of Labor to uh, you know, specific numbers and we're still uh, waiting for the, the reply. But uh, if I if I may, I can, uh, yung media landscape dito sa Pilipinas, as, as per the data from the National Telecommunications, is that there are around 1,876 1,876 private media outlets in the Philippines, 364 AM stations, and 951 FM stations, 561 TV stations, and 400 newspaper titles as of year 2000. Aside from the fact that the government operates 34 media outlets consisting of around 32 radio stations and two TV stations, we have two major uh, uh, cable operators, na uh, non-profit organizations, the Federation of International Cable TV Association of the Philippines, or PICTAP, and the Philippine Cable Telecommunications Association. PICTAP alone has around 600 member operators employing around 24,000 employees. This does not include yung mga, mga social media, uh, yung figure na to. Okay. Uh, attorney Solis, Attorney Solis, no, parang ang lumalabas nga po ito, uh, we still have the data, Philippine Statistics Authority, 446,000 itong uh, information and communication sector. Now, we talk about the public sector. Kayo ho, na nandyan po yung PCOO natin. Ilan ho ba dyan sa ating uh, mga government-owned uh, and controlled corporations, yung mga sa PTV for instance, ilan ho ba yung nasa public sector na masasabi ho natin part ng... Uh, ng uh, information and communication na uh, sector. Ilan po yung empleyado natin dyan? Uh, uh, yes po, sir. Uh, actually, I'm with the uh, Presidential Task Force on Media Security. And uh, actually, we don't have the data right now. Maybe we can ask the PCOO later on uh, to provide us with data for yung specific numbers ng mga media workers. Uh, Doon na naka-employ mismo uh, uh, na plantilla ng government. Yung, yung regarding lalo na yung sa mga questions you know, sa yung mga naka-job orders, eh, we will still also go, uh, going to look to that. And maybe we can provide you with a, uh, again, the position paper for you to... Yeah, pa pa-submit na lang po. But I think it is uh, basic that uh, we have these figures because we're talking about the, the media workers in the public sector, considering that in the two measures, they are not uh, included. And uh, kami ni Senator Aini, we are looking for a solution, find ways on how we'll be able to include them and uh, make sure that they're, they're part of the, the, the media sector. So, hindi naman pwedeng ang poprotektahan lang natin yung nasa private sector. No? So, anyway, um, let's, let's, let's hear from our uh, labor groups. We have attorney Sani Matula and uh, uh, Sir Luis Corral of TUCB. Can we, can we hear from attorney uh, Sani Matula? Sir, you recognize on this uh, part two. Uh, particular issues, ito hong uh, media workers welfare, tsaka ito mong Eddie Garcia. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, Chair uh, Villanueva, at uh, good afternoon, Senator Aimee Marcos, at sa mga uh, opisyal ng gobyerno at sa mga trade union at iba pang sektor na kasama natin. Uh, apang, apat na punto lang po, uh, yung una, napaka-importante po yung usapin talaga ng security of tenure sa uh, media sa movie industry. So, yun ang aming biinan. Ang uh, pangalawa po ay nakapa-importante din yung uh, the right to, to self-organization. Uh, sana ma-reflect yung right to self-organization. Hindi ko masyado nakita sa, sa proposal. Tapos yung pangatlo ay sinabi kanina ni Senator Amy Marcos yung tungkol sa creation of industrial tripartite uh, council sa sa movie at saka sa media. Uh, palagay namin ay napaka-importante ito at wala, palagay ko naman gagastusin yung gobyerno dito sapagkat uh, ito yung tripartite body na i-recognize. Eh. So yung so, workers, yung employers at yung government at uh, secretariat lang naman dito ang kinakailangan. Yung, uh, sa ngayon ay ginagawa yan ng Bureau of Labor Relations. At uh, yung uh, pang-apat na sinusuportahan namin ay yung, uh, siyempre, yung nasa proposal na ay napaka-importante yung hazard pay para sa mga manggagawa sa media. 
uh, lalong-lalo na at uh, yan ay aming sinusuporta na nasa bill sa kasalukuyan. So yun lang muna siguro yung aking masasabi. We will submit our position paper from yes. the Federation of Free Workers and Nagkaisa Labor Coalition. Thank you. Thank you po. Thank you, Attorney Sani. And uh, dalawa pa lang itong bills na tinatakil natin. Nakakahiya na rin sa ibang mga kasama natin. Hindi pa yung nakakapagsalita. Pagpasensyahan nyo na po. We were delayed of our... Uh, uh deliberations today because of uh communication problems and technical problems here at the session hall pero consolation nyo siguro nag-iisa po ako dito sa session hall wala ako akong kasama <laughs> let's give the floor to attorney uh, Luis Coral and then uh, sir Elmer Labot sir please magandang hapon sa ating mga kapatid sa Senado at sa uh, industriya Ang TUCP po ay uh, wholeheartedly in support of the spirit and intention of all of the measures presented today. Uh, we take particular note of the importance of the Eddie Garcia bill. Uh, we went through so many hearings in the House about this bill and we were really scandalized at the lack of uh, enforcement on the part of the Department of Labor on an existing department order on inspections. So I think that is the real reason why there was this manifest need to provide legislation specifically for the entertainment uh, workers who are being subjected to gross violations of occupational safety and health uh, standards. On the matter of the media uh, bill, uh, we propose your honors, uh, we submit to the wisdom of uh, the Senate, that this now be converted to a Magna Carta for media workers. And that in the spirit of uh, equity, comity, basic human basic. fairness, that the entire uh, entirety of the media sector, both public sector and private workers, be uh, under the coverage of this uh, Magna Carta for media workers. As was pointed out uh, so eloquently by Senators Marcos and Joel Villanueva, the most atrocious forms of violations of labor rights, of labor-only contracting, can be found in government. There are hundreds of thousands of job order workers in government or memorandum of service workers in government, including in PTV4 and in government media, as Congresswoman uh, Taduran fully knows, who are not recognized as employees of government. The civil service has said that no employer-employee relationship exists for these workers. So saan ang tatakbuhan nila? Anong rights nila? At anong labor standards ang uh, uh, ma ma-i-invoke nila? So, so we, we fully uh, support these bills, but we hope that this be converted to a Magna Carta for all media workers, including those in the public sector and not just in the private sector. On the question raised by Senator Marcos on the matter of liability that it might be too all-inclusive, we submit, Your Honors, that we uh, take into consideration uh, the control test. I think liability should only lie where an employer-employee relationship fully subsists. And the control test is one of the measures that should be articulated in the bill to ensure that uh, management and media owners do not violate those labor rights uh, by uh, proposing um, that the relationship is really one of project employment or that the worker is really under an independent production outfit when as to results and to the methods and means of reaching those results it is really the media owner that has full control uh, on the matter of the tripartite uh, Council, we fully uh, support the wisdom of the proposal of the Taduran Bill that and, and the Senate versions of that measure. That is uh, correct. Uh, in fact, uh, what we would encourage is that the Dole provide that all industries, not just the media industry, already set up their industrial tripartite councils in the wake of the need to uh, dovetail uh, efforts for the National Employment Recovery Strategy of Government. Uh, on the liability question, uh, maybe solidarity liability will lie, Your Honours, and for your consideration, if death or injury uh, occur with respect to the worker. For your consideration, Your Honours. Madaming salamat po.
Thank you. Thank you, sir. We give the floor to uh, Sir Elmer uh, before we move forward to other measures. Sir Elmer, please. Yeah, um, magandang hapon po, uh, Chairman Villanueva, uh, Honorable uh, Senator Aime Marcos and other heads of uh, the Joint Committee hearing uh, today, uh, mga labor leaders who are around with us today, as well as uh, representatives from the various government offices and uh, private uh, entities. No? I'd like to express our uh, position paper uh, from the KMU on the uh, Eddie Garcia Law or Senate Bill uh, 294. So, uh, greetings of solidarity to everybody. The death of uh, legendary actor Eddie Garcia while working on the set in 2019 uh, put into question the kind of working condition that the workers in front and behind the camera face in the movie, television, and TV industry. If not for his death, which could have been avoided, workers and talents, rights and welfare would be put into the limelight and given more attention by the public. So the lack of occupational safety and health standards on set was one of the reason, reasons why this incident garnered wide, wide public at attention. But sadly, this has been the norm in many industries and workplaces outside the movie and TV industry. There are numerous cases wherein the non-compliance of employers and companies to occupational safety and health standards led to workplace injury and in worst cases, death. So uh, workers and talents in the movie, TV and radio industry, as well as in all industries, must be afforded the proper indignity and recognition befitting the service they provide for people and the nation. It is in this regard that we in the KMU convey our support for the passage of Senate Bill Number 294 or Eddie Garcia Law. As one of the leading trade unions centers in the country, KMU prides itself for its long history of struggling for the rights and welfare of workers. It is from this position that we extend our support to this legislation that seeks to strengthen the rights and welfare of workers in the movie and television industry. We believe that this is a step forward towards the recognition and protection of workers' rights and welfare. In this regard, we echo the position and recommendations of ACTOR, or the League of uh, Filipino Actors, which had been expressed earlier by uh, the, uh, Chairman Dong Dantes. So, uh, with regard to certain provisions in the bill, including but not limited to hours of work, rest period, compensable waiting time, wages and be benefits, overtime pay, and night shift differential, travel time and travel surcharges, strengthening of occupational health and safety, uh, and the hiring of qualified safety officers, provision of LOC, and putting in, into place a grievance mechanism. So one is the importance of strictly complying with the minimum and maximum number of work hours. Stories have been told that workers in the industry normally experience a 27 work day and this is detrimental to both the physical and mental health of workers and talents so it may lead to workplace injuries or accidents so uh, all stakeholders must recognize the fact that this must be avoided while still providing quality service and output second the right of the workers and talents to decent wages and benefits is essential third is the provision of uh, LOC. Contractualization in all forms must not be permitted. It is commendable that this bill recognizes the injustice that is contractualization and is taking a step closer to end contractualization. There is still a long way to go to improve the overall working conditions of workers in all industries and workplaces. This bill, if passed into law, will make a valuable contribution towards the realization of the workers' struggle for their rights and welfare. We wish, however, to emphasize that special attention must be given to the so-called below-the-line technical crews, such as the cameraman, cameraman, buffers, light technicians, production assistants, line producers, sound engineers, technical directors, etc. They're, they are arguably the most important people in any movie and TV production and must therefore be given utmost attention. Lastly, it is also our intention to extend support and endorse the proposal to improve the service incentive leave bill. House Bill number 1338 and Senate bills 
numbers 425 and 641. However, I would like to emphasize that uh, in the Senate version, we hope that the number of days uh, given to the uh, service incentive leave be improved from the pros proposed 10 days to uh, at least uh, 30 days to uh, be at level with those in the government uh, offices. So, maraming salamat po and more power. Thank uh, you. Uh, Thank you, Sir Elmer. At uh, ikaw yung unang nagbanggit doon sa mga susunod itong mga ilang uh, paano kalang batas na ating uh, tatalakayin itong uh, service incentive leave, barangay skilled workers registry at itong prohibited acts of uh, discrimination against women. But before we we go there, I promise Dole to uh, 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 comment on the uh, statements made by our resource persons, particularly kay uh, Chair Lisa, kay uh, uh, Chairman uh, Dantes, uh, si uh, Yusek Asek uh, Tes, Kukweko, uh, before we, ano, siguro kung may makakasagot din yung kanina pa namin tinatanong ni Senator Aimee, yung purpose of the public information fund dun sa media welfare at saan saan natin kukunin do we have uh, 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 do we have the budget for this and uh, ano yung uh, uh, paano ito ma ma operationalize uh, sa ating mga kasamaan sa PCO kahit i-submit na lang po but I'll give the floor to uh, Asek uh, Kukweko please uh, bef oh, yes Senator Aimee Yes, so head. sorry. So sorry, uh, Mr. Chair. Kasi uh, tutuloy ako sa 1 o'clock na committee sa train. I have a question lang by way of housekeeping. Dahil yes, may mga bill nga na pending sa Committee on Women, meron rin pang kalahatang uh, anti-discrimination against women, ethnic groups, religious, gender, etc., uh, age, and so on na nakapending sa aking komite ng cultural communities. So, bale, uh, as usual, yung naglanding sa inyo, eh, tatlo na, ikatlo ng komite ito. Kaya just by way of housekeeping, could we get clarity from uh, rules perhaps uh, on the management of this topic po? Kasi I also have a committee report, but it's a broader range universal anti-discrimination bill covering women, aged, ethnic groups, religious, etc. Yes, thank you, uh, Senator Aimi. We are uh, aware of that and uh, we will submit to the Wisdom of the Rules Committee. However, we'd like to put on record that uh, the only uh, jurisdiction of this committee is to talk on uh, labor issues. And that's why we, we, we wanted to just focus on the uh, prohibited acts of discrimination against women when it comes to uh, labor matters, uh, Your Honor. I'm just curious if there's a possibility, because a huge chunk of the discrimination and prohibited acts um, in the committee report of the cultural communi communities that I chair, involved labor practices precisely. Is there room for a consolidated report, perhaps? De definitely we are open to that uh, madam chair and uh, we would uh, gladly uh, um, consolidate and uh, collaborate with the chairperson of uh, that committee your honor thank As you very I much your honor thank you very much uh, senator joel because you're clearly the expert on uh, the labor end but of course, there are other elements such as access to education, to healthcare, yes. and so on that have been denied certain sectors. So, pero malaking bagay pa rin yung paghahanap buhay. So, kailangan siguro ipagkaisa natin kung maaari. Or if not, yun nga, hiwalayan yung labor part. Sige, thank you very much just uh, for tidy housekeeping po. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator Aimi, and appreciate your uh, virtual presence here in this uh, committee. We thank your your honor for uh, being with us this uh, morning and this afternoon, <laughs> and uh, hopefully we'll finish before three o'clock. Uh, we can <laughs> <before>. <laughs> session, eh? <laughs> sawa, sawa. Lahat ng senador. Rin ng movie industry. Thank you, thank you very much. We give the floor before we we leave the two uh, uh, measures. Itong uh, media welfare act that the uh, Garcia bill. Uh, we, we give the floor to ASEC uh, Tess. ASEC Tess, please. Oh, yes. uh, good afternoon, po, Chair, uh, Senator William Nueva, Senator Amy, uh, the Congress uh, uh, 
persons who are here. Um, yes, we have heard po all the concerns that were raised. Dole will prioritize inspection po for the uh, movie production media. Uh, we this has been the major ano, um, crux of all the concerns because sinasabi niyo nga po uh, because of this um, lack of this enforcement we you are the the all the work related incidents have arisen yes we are now going to really address this and address it well which means we have we will be working with all stakeholders both in private and in government because we we understand the nuances po of this sector yes. where um uh, the shoots the location shoots can really be happening everywhere and we have to be on our toes and it is also uh um needing uh proper coordination we are not going to safety and health po will really be a priority to address all the safety and health concerns that have been raised in terms of accidents that have occurred uh that's why the eddie garcia law was passed because of the fatality that arose because of a, a very unsafe uh working condition and that has happened but we will also address and this where we also heard many of the concerns on general labor standards, looking at hours of work, looking at um, uh, the uh, wages, looking at the con even uh, addressing uh, contractualization. If it uh, if it should, you know, it, um, because we do have our issuance on allowed contractualization and those that should that are prohibited, we did do a big um, uh, inspection before for the three major networks because of the issue on contractualization. And yes, we did see of uh, the, the issues that arose. This was with the ABS-CBN, GMA, and TV5, if I'm not, but this was, uh, I, I do have to go back and get my my notes here, but we will share that with you. We were, we did a full inspection for on this, on, but it was really looking at um, the, the offices and the workers and uh, the, all the labor standards that should have been uh, complied with. Sir, on, on safety and health, uh, I, we note that no one says the peculiarities and that was why a new bill was passed. But definitely, sir, we also understand that with the OSH law, we have addressed this in terms of addressing risks in all workplaces. We will continue to do this there are trainings that have been done already with the broad, with the industry. These have started, and we will continue to build the competencies for of the safety officers, especially in this sector, because it will really be very important for them to realize and address all the risks from um, the prolonged work hours, from the temporary construction of the sets, from the shooting, which will entail so much hazards, including. Um, uh, um, uh, chemicals, explosives, all these carry risks, and we know that for, and that is why we have to make everyone aware, everyone in the set, the safety officers and their responsibilities, that Dolly will continue building the competency of the safety officers for this sector. And um, we also uh, will continue to work for with you as policies will have to be developed or have to be enhanced in addressing all the concerns that were raised earlier. Uh, we will do the report. We will provide you, Paul, sir, with the reports uh, as soon Thank as you. we ask the inspection to be fully done in this sector, uh, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, ASEC Tess. No, I think it's important to note that, that there are different categories uh, of safety officers, I think SO1 to yes, SO4, yes. if I'm not mistaken, tama ho ba? Yes, Each of yes. which uh, requires several prescribed uh, training, yes. occupational safety and health. And you made mention that there are existing uh, mandatory training being offered by uh, DOLE. Siguro yung key dito, especially doon sa Eddie Garcia bill, is may, may mga nuances. Ano ba yung mga nuances in the TV and movie industry that should be included in such training at uh, pa pa paano ito masisiguro na di ba para mismong si uh, Cherry sa kanina we're, talk, we're we're listening to her kay uh, Sir uh, Dingdong uh, Dantes 
uh, important na mak maklaro ito at uh, doon sa ating mga manggagawa sa industriya, alam nila na meron po tayong uh, uh, ginagawa at kung kailangan na uh, improve pa natin ito, ano yung mga mismong uh, specific uh, improvements that we need to take, uh, whether ito nga, itong uh, legislation and uh, uh, ano pa yung mga po pwede nating magawa. So thank you, uh, ASEC uh, Tess. Maraming salamat. Maraming salamat po sa ating uh, mga resource persons. Pasensya na ho kayo dahil uh, we're running out of time. We wanted to uh, tackle itong service uh, incentive leave, Barangay Skilled Workers Registry, Prohibited Acts of Discrimination Against Women. Um, we'll give the floor. I, I can see uh, DILG USEC Rico, DILG USEC uh, uh, Dino. Pasensya na po, sirs. And uh, we'll give the floor to... Uh, Nay natin si uh, Yusek Rico and then uh, si Yusek uh, Martin Dino. Uh, sir, good afternoon. You have the floor, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, the Department of Integrity and Local Government respectfully recommends that the two measures be consolidated as they pertain to the same subject matter as to Senate Bill Number 8200 and Senate Bill 2021. Yes please. yes, please. Next slide, Next please. slide. Next slide, please. So as you can so, see, 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 they're almost similar. So that's why we recommend that it should be consolidated, Mr. Chair. Next slide, please. For this, it may be prudent to clarify the following. Does the Senate Bill 1820 covers all media workers and media entities in the public sector since it mentioned GSIS benefits? Number two, the amount of additional benefits, example, death benefits, disability benefits stated in the measure are different. Hence, it is respectfully suggested that empirical data be obtained showing the reasonable death and disability benefits to be given. Next slide, please. On the Eddie Garcia Act, the Department of Interior and Local Government appears to be not a privy to the proposed measure. Hence, we shall defer to the position taken by the Department of Labor, Employment, and other agencies concerned. Next slide, please. On the other incentive, incentive leave, the Department also appears to be not in privy to the proposed measure. Hence, we shall defer to the position taken by the Department of Labor and Employment. Next slide, please. On the registry of barangay skilled workers, with the permission, of course, of Yusek Martin Dino here, who is in charge of the barangay affairs, joined with the Committee on Local Government, the Department of Interior and Local Government re respectfully recommends that the two measures be consolidated as they pertain to the same subject matter. What the department notes, the notable, noble intention of the measures, it may be prudent to ask clarifications on the following. Number one, what are the mechanisms to be employed to ensure that the contents of the registry will not be wrongly used? And lastly, on the other hand, what are mechanisms to be employed by the barangay to prevent submission of fake documents? Next slide, please. And on the last bill, on uh, expanding the coverage of prohibited acts of discrimination against women, we respectfully submit that we are strongly against discrimination towards anybody, regardless of sex, age, class, status, ethnicity, color, ability, disability, religious and political beliefs, among others. Everybody shall be given equal opportunity in line with the state principles and policies and the Bill of Rights enshrined in the Constitution. It is needless to reiterate for the sake of emphasis. We submit also that it is illegal to threat, be violent, or vex a person for their personal preference and convictions. It is also regressive to hamper access to health services, education, and employment opportunities when such are part and parcel of human rights. Thus, we stand for equal opportunity and protection for everybody. However, since the measure seeks to amend the Labor Code of the Philippines, the Department of Interior and Local Government appears to be not in privy thereto. Hence, we shall defer to the position taken by the Department of Labor Employment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Yusek uh, Rico Echeverri, Yusek for External and Legislative Affairs. We give the floor to uh, Yusek Martin Dino, the Undersecretary for uh, Barangay Affairs. Yusek Martin, natatawa ho kayo, pero gusto ko humbanggitin yung isa sa tanong kanina ni Yusek Rico. Itatanong ko po sa inyo yun eh. <laughs> so you're recognized, please. Uh, I second emotion uh, to ano, uh, Yusek RJ. Alam mo, sa totoo lang, dapat ito tumakbong congressman, hindi tatay niya eh. Dahil, uh, um, aman tama siya ron eh. Anyway, uh, siguro... Yeah, mas magaling ho yan kaysa sa tatay niya. Nakasama oh, ho yan. Yeah, mas magaling din oh, siya. Eh, <laughs> ewan ko kung pang uh, congressman to, pang senador na eh. Anyway, uh, dagdagan ko na lang ano, kasi yun naman talaga ang posisyon ng ano, ng departamento at uh, malinaw na uh, in-emphasize ni uh, Yusek RJ uh, yung posisyon namin and every aspect. Pero dagdagan ko lang yung tungkol dun sa barangay. No? Ta matagal na namin pangarap yan na uh, lahat ng mga skilled workers sa barangay, dapat meron kaming data niyan. Kaya nga ngayon, meron na kami yung tinatawag na barangay profile system na kung saan uh, lahat ng mga information with regards to barangay, especially our uh, skilled worker inside the barangay, ay meron na kami ng mga uh, pool of uh, uh, skilled worker. And of course, uh, if we can uh, enjoin them to magkaroon ng uh, kooperatiba so that uh, talagang magiging uh, systematic yung uh, mga skilled worker natin in the barangay level. At uh, tungkol naman dun sa kanina, sa pinag-usapan natin, dapat magkaroon ng standard na sinisigil ang LGU, lalo-lalo na dito sa mga uh, shooting na ginagawa. Kasi ito yung mga reklamong umaabot sa akin, na kung saan may mga barangay captain na naningil-ningil ng sobra-sobra, na dapat sana uh, siguro magagawa kayo ng uh, policy na standard lang uh, sa lahat ng LGU sa buong Pilipinas. Uh, at saka dapat uh, yung mga barangay, uh, once na uh, nag-request ang mga uh, producer, nakaantabay kami dyan. Anyway, uh, compensated naman kung uh, gagamitin nila talaga yung service ng barangay. Para naman matulungan din namin ang industriya at uh, uh, magkaroon ng standard na paniningil. Dahil talaga ngayon, uh, uh, nakakaawa din yung mga uh, ibang uh, movie outfit na sinisigil na sa sobra-sobra. Anyway, uh, yun lang ano, ang uh, maidadagdag ko. At uh, uh, thank you very much uh, for inviting us here. Uh, Senator Joel at Senator Aimee. So, thank you very much. Mabay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Yusik Martin Dino. No? Uh, kanina parang Inaano nga natin, is there a need or, or, or important or necessary to have a uh, registry? I think all of us would say yes, it is important to, uh, do we need to pass a law uh, in order to, to, to have this? May mga ilang uh, nagsasabi, uh, pwede na sa DILG, but at the same time, it doesn't stop Congress from uh, passing a, a, a law. No? But uh, kanina yung uh, uh, question is, uh, who will monitor the compliance of the barangays in the creation and maintenance of the registry? Definitely, oh, the ILG po yan, no? At uh, I think uh, uh, there's no question to that. Uh, perhaps it's 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 uh, para matapos na natin tung barangay skilled workers ng mabilis. Perhaps if we can hear the National Privacy Commission, uh, we have with us Attorney uh, Bocar or Attorney Ranigo Jr. I don't know who's uh, who can. Uh, Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Um, I'll be speaking. At, this is Attorney Vida Bukar. Okay. Um, I will be the one speaking on behalf of the National yes. Privacy Commission. Yes, ma'am. You're recognized, ma'am. Please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, with regard to the proposed um, Barangay Registry, po, um, although we, yun po, we support the initiative to have a registry for skilled workers, um, however, we do express some concern as to some of the provisions, in particular po yung um, one of the provisions where in yung data, any other data that may be considered necessary. We wish to um, later on po sa position paper namin, maybe we could um, enumerate or request for a more specific um, enumeration of data because it might be prone to abuse 
um, later on. And we also um, have concerns regarding the proportionality um, and also the accessibility to make sure lang po that um, only the proper um, authorized persons or personnel within the barangay or within the responsible department um, would be able to have access because um, the list or the registry po um, may be targeted for identity theft or possibly yung falsification nga po as uh, mentioned earlier by the um, DILG. So we express concern on those um, matters. So yun po um, basically on the part of the National Privacy Commission and um, we reserve lang po to submit our comments at a later time po um, regarding some of the provisions regarding proportionality as well as transparency lang po as to how um, we can help um, express the uh, help the barangays po um, be furnished with the list, the much needed uh, list po of registry, but at the same time observe the data privacy rights po of the Filipino people and the concerned data subjects. Um, yun lang po, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Attorney Bocarno. And uh, I think uh, we all agree of the noble intention of the bill. However, we are uh, very careful, of course, with the privacy issues here. Uh, perhaps if you could also be clear with your position doon sa uh, what particular information is uh, necessary to achieve the purpose of the bill. Hindi ho ba? Kasi ho, meron dito yung uh, in the both the proposed uh, registries, um, isang, isang point lang ho, no? gusto kong i-share. Yung allowing the barangay to uh, collect any other detail which it deems necessary, nakalagay po dito, which it deems necessary. Now, considering that there is uh, no qualification as to what is considered necessary, uh, yun ho yung gusto ko sanang uh, maitanong sa inyo, ano yung uh, po pwede nyo maipayo sa atin as legislators, uh, yung bills giving the barangay unbridled power in uh, the collection of information, ano ho yung po pwede nating magawa uh, para maiwasan natin yung potential na violation of one's right to uh, privacy. Baka ho po pwede nga uh, supplyan nyo kami ng, uh, ng uh, ammunition dito. Sige po Mr. Chair. Um, we'll also look into yung mga previous advisory opinions po namin um, to serve as guidance and possibly precedence po. Um, I think meron na po kaming mga previous, baka may similar circumstances po. We can um, include those in our position paper as well. Thank you, Mr. Yes, Mr. thank you. And I think the ILG uh, will also agree with me, yung registry can be automatically shared to government uh, agencies for their uh, respective uh, database now that we have the national ID system. No? So, pwedeng i-synchronize po doon. Maraming salamat, uh, ma'am. Thank you very much. At mukhang pwede na tayong magtapos doon sa, sa barangay uh, uh, skilled workers. Chair, if I may. Yes, please, uh, po, Congresswoman. Mr. Yeah. Chair. Apo, kasi I just heard kanina, sorry po, nag, ano lang ako, nag-break ng uh, saglit na parang uh, the proposal ata of the DILG, if I'm not mistaken, is i-consolidate yung bill. Kasi po, uh, gusto ko lang erase na uh, nagkaroon na ng agreement between the stakeholders na dapat po separate yung uh, measure because magkaiba po talaga sa scope ng work ang uh, mainstream media, which is the news media, the media uh, industry. When we're talking about SB 1380 and SB 2185 right now. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. Sorry for that. That is uh, totally different from what we have discussed in, in the part one. We're in part two now. Ah, uh, all right. All right. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you for thank that you. Uh, clarification, thank Mr. You. Chair. Salamat. Salamat. Thank you. The, uh, Yusek, akala ko kasi, ano, uh, iko-consolidate. Thank you for the yeah. clarification. It's totally different. What we are consolidating would be SB 1380 and SB 2185. I thank, thank you, you for the clarification. Thank you. Thank you again, Mr. Chair. Yes, and um, sec, thank at you. this juncture, uh, let's let's recognize uh, from uh, the Department of Labor and Employment, Dr. Karina Trevilla, and then we go to uh, ECOP and the PCCI. Ma'am, uh, Dr. Trevilla, you're recognized. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair and the members uh, of the committee. Skilled workers and discrimination against women. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, I, I'm not doctor, sir. doctor, sir. I'm a doctor, sir. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, sir. Um, for this... Lunch dito. 
Apo nga, kanina pa po kayo. Uh, as for the skills registry, uh, Senator, uh, may I endorse the Bureau of Local Employment Division Chief Grace Baldosa and for the SIL, we have Chief Nicanor Bon. We are um, tasked to speak about the anti-discrimination bill na ang task po ng Bureau of Workers with Special Concerns um, is on the discrimination bill. So may I... Um, Turn over po uh, the discussion to Grace Baldosa, if you will permit, Mr. Chair. Okay, please proceed. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm here. I am Grace Baldosa from the Bureau of Local Employment. Uh, on the Barangay Skills Registry, we strongly support Senate Bill numbers one three eight zero and two one eight five, establishing a registry of skilled and professional workers at the barangay level. Uh, please allow me to share also some of DOLE's initiatives relative to this. Uh, first, the DOLE operates and maintains the PESO Employment Information System. It is a labor market information system which is beneficial in filling data gaps and delivering efficient service to the department's clients. It utilizes, it is being utilized for collecting and analyzing labor market information. This system is under the National Skills Registration Program or NSRP. Initiated in 2019 with the main objective of maintaining a continuing national skills registry. So it is a, an employment facilitation machinery of the DOLE, which aims to cover all cities or municipalities with operating public employment service offices or PESOS. Uh, the page contains a database of active manpower supply with profiles of all persons and employers registered under the NSRP. It also shows information on qualifications and skills of the applicants, as well as the job vacan vacancies being posted by the employers. So it is a job matching and has a client transaction tracking feature. For the barangays, uh, they may also have access to the PACE. Since internet connection is not available in all pesos and barangays, uh, the, we have an, an off offline version of the PACE available to the public employment service offices and to monitor and update these profiles uh, the pesos seek the assistance of um, they may seek the assistance of the barangays in the jurisdiction in their jurisdiction by furnishing them with a monthly report or provide the list of registered job seekers residing in their barangay so at the moment there are 1929 total pesos nationwide 89% or 1,713 pesos are using the PACE buzzer. And additionally, um, under the National Employment Recovery Strategy or NERS, uh, which is a medium-term medium plan anchored on the Trabajo Negocio Kabuhayan Initiative by expanding and enhancing the employment and livelihood opportunities, we have the mission race or rebooting activities through community engagement. This is enrolled po under the NERS. It is an effort to reboot economic activities at the at the local level or at the community level by one providing in the form of livelihood trainings and second through the profiling of labor market situations in the in the locality to identify the necessary interventions, which is seems to speed up for our employment recovery efforts. Uh, the mission race will be implemented under the Government Internship Program, or GIP, where individuals qualified will become the GIP coordinator, or known as race manager, and hero support under the regional offices of DOLE to undertake the task related to the recovery efforts of the department under the Nurse Action Group. That's all from the Bureau of Local Employment, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh... Ma'am Grace Baldosa. Um, at this juncture, we'll, we'd like to hear from our friends from uh, ECOP, PCCI. We have with us uh, uh, the president of ECOP, Sir Sergio Ortiz Luis. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, Robert Maronilla, thank you. And the uh, presence na po, at, uh, na na tayo ng gusto. Uh, yeah, yeah. Please, yeah. you recognize Sir Robert, our Suki, here in our uh, Committee on Labor. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, good afternoon po sa lahat na nandito. Mr. Chair, um, regarding the Barangay Skilled Workers Bill, um, we believe that this bill is timely, no? Filed, um, especially now that there's a pandemic, job creation is a priority. 
um, we we already supported this um, during the um, Congress hearings, and we pose no objection to this bill, Mr. Chairman. As to the um, uh, discrimination bill, um, echo that there's no room for discrimination in any workplace, no. And because we're pressed with time, um, um, we also support this bill, Mr. Chairman. So, Mr. Chairman, am I going to also comment on the S service incentive leave? Yes, yes, please, uh, okay. Sir Robert, please. Yes, yes. So as to the service incentive leave, Mr. Chairman, the Philippines already has one of the highest number of non-national working days in the ASEAN region. In addition, other paid leaves are provided for by existing laws such as solo parent leave, maternity leave, paternity leave, gynecological leave, among others. <laughs> Moreover, the law likewise grants the president discretionary power to proclaim additional regular and special days pursuant to RA 9592. So in effect, there are days that are regularly proclaimed by the president as a special holiday such as election day, Mr. Chairman. So notably, so, so, these national non-working days do not include local non-working holidays celebrated by the LGUs. We must also take into account the intermittent declarations of work suspension due to typhoon, flooding, and other calamities. Uh, but Mr. Chairman, most importantly, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic has caused massive disruption to businesses as a whole. It should be emphasized that any further reduction on the number of working days through additional leaves would have a critical impact on productivity and the cost of doing business. Mr. President, we also rely on the Presidential Proclamation Number 1107 Series of 2020 by uh, President Duterte, which states that for the country to recover from the adverse economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, there is a need to encourage economic productivity by, among others, minimizing work disruption and commemorating some special holidays as special working days instead. So, Mr. Chairman, we trust that this committee would take into consideration ECOP's foregoing reasons in posing its reservation in supporting uh, the bills on uh, service incentive leave. Yun lang po, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Robert. No, in the in fact, perhaps we could uh, uh, spread into the records uh, what, what we have been uh, talking here in, in the Senate, in the Senate halls. When you look at the, uh, the, the holidays that we are having, yung national holidays, and you're correct, but the local holidays, no, perhaps we are uh, one, if not the top uh, country in the world no, with, with, with so many uh, holidays. And uh, perhaps if you could also help us out here, because we're talking, we already... Uh, entertaining the idea of uh, rationalizing our holidays, no? Uh, uh, pwedeng uh, 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 yung ilang sectors who would like to avail of this holiday, yung ispa dito, uh, para hindi ganun kadami. And hindi lang ho yung uh, um, present uh, uh, number of holidays that, that, that we have right now. If you look at this committee and other committees in the Senate, and dami hong mga proposal for, for holidays, no? non-working holidays. So uh, we're, we're very sensitive about it, especially at this time na, na, na ang hirap na, na, na saluhin ng ating mga employers itong uh, additional uh, non-working holidays. No? So uh, we, are, we are aware of that. We're, we're sensitive of that. And uh, uh, thank you for your, uh, uh, your, uh, your statement. We are here to listen, no? Uh, please bear in mind that uh, we are here to balance things out and uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, we also hear not only from our workers but also for, from our uh, employers. We'd like to hear from uh, PCCI ba? Itong uh, sa atin po, si uh, Sir uh, Guerrero. Uh, he was here kanina, if, if he's still here. From PCCI, from ECOP, are there any other representatives who would like to uh, uh, speak and uh, give their position on these uh, three uh, important uh, measures, service incentive leave, barangay skilled workers registry, tsaka itong uh, prohibited acts of discrimination against women. Yes, Mr. Yes. Chair, from Dole, we are um, going yes, to please. speak about anti-discrimination bill that you have proposed. Uh, yes, uh, please, please uh, 
Director uh, Trevilla, you recognize? Your permission, uh, Senator uh, Joey. Yes, uh, uh, the dollar. Yeah, and then we will call on our uh, representative from PCW, Ms. Uh, Bailosis. Thank you. Please proceed. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. The DOLE, for the record, supports these measures, proposing the amendments of Article 133 and 135 of the Labor Code. It's high time that we look into these old provisions since the Labor Code is 1972 and there are new uh, modern ways of looking at the uh, aspects of employment. And we welcome that the proposed bill is expanding the prohibited acts of discrimination against women on account of their sex. And we are happy to note that ECOP is supporting uh, the said bills. And um, all these bills contemplate on strengthening the current provision of the Labor Code with regard to extending protection to women workers particularly against uh, discrimination. So let me uh, go directly on, on specific um, provision, like on the inclusion of assignment, including dismissal, uh, retrenchment as aspects of employment or management actions that are susceptible to acts of discrimination under Senate Bills 2093 and 440 and House Bill 7722. Even the International Labor Organization recognizes that various acts of discrimination may occur at the workplace in terms of job assignments and termination of employment. So if assignment is included, it will have positive impact at the workplace. Women will have better prospects if they will be given rewarding assignments where they can further hone their skills. This could also mean sense of fairness or sense of fair-mindedness where it could highly motivate employees Hence, we concur with the expansion of this prohibited act to include assignment and dismissal or retrenchment. We also support the provision under Senate Bill 440, which considers as an act of direct discrimination, the giving of preference to a male applicant over a female applicant in the hiring process, whether through notices, announcements, or advertisements for employment and apprenticeship, or in the actual recruit recruitment, hiring or employment of workers where the particular job can be equally handled by a woman. This proposed feature of Senate Bill 440 is a testament of how committed we are in so far as the provision of the UN CEDO on eliminating discretion against women through ensuring on the basis of equality of men and women the right to the same employment opportunities, including the application of the same criteria for selection in matters of employment. Since it has become the state obligation to address the observed gap in our current laws to protect women against discrimination in the hiring process and the provision of equal opportunity in employment, we therefore concur with the proposed provision under Senate Bill Number 440. However, we kindly suggest that there is a need to think about or consider the use of the term employee after male and female, given that technically one who goes through a selection or hiring process is not yet considered an employee but an applicant. It is also suggested to define the following terms, characteristics of her sex, actual characteristics, and presumed characteristics. We also suggest that a provision be included on encouraging companies to eliminate discrimination in employment through incorporating non-discrimination policies, which is already a currently practiced in our jurisdiction. Lastly, we beg for the consideration of this committee in so far as the period of 30 days within which Dole shall come up with the IRR, we propose 60 days, which is similar to the period provided for under the expanded maternity leave law, and which we believe would be a more realistic period given that 30 days would not be enough. We have to mobilize for the tripartite council, solicit their inputs, deliberate on the inputs, and then eventually come up with a draft IRR, then submit to the legal service for vetting and for the approval of the secretary until it's issue once. We submit your honor. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Director Trevilla. Uh, before I, I, I'd like to some to, to pose some uh, questions to uh, Attorney Robert Maronilla, but uh, can we just hear first from uh, PCW, Ms. Uh, Bailosis, ma'am? You're, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, on the part of the Philippine Commission on Women, we strongly support the proposed legislative measure on expanding the coverage of prohibited acts of discrimination against women. And in the interest of time, I will just like to proceed with the um, specific 
uh, proposed enhancement of the commission, which are also in line with the positions that have just been mentioned by the DOLE. First is that uh, we express our support on the inclusion of the turn assignment on Article 133B of PD442, as well as the insertion of a new form of discrimination on the favoring of a male employee over a female employee with respect to dismissal of personnel or the application of any retrenchment policy. At the same time, we also support the insertion of an additional form of discrimination as provided in Senate Bill Number 440 on giving preference to a male person over a, a female person in the hiring process, whether to notices, announcements, or advertisements for employment and apprenticeship, or in the actual recruitment, hiring, or employment of workers, whether the particular job can be equally handled. Uh, um, especially when the particular job can be equally handled by a woman. As noted also by Dole, we recommend to change the word employee to person or applicant since this is still in the recruitment phase. At the same time, on the amendment to Article 137, we also support the inclusion of the new prohibited act um, to wit to deny any woman the benefits of employment or other statutory benefits under our laws by reasons of her sex. So the Philippine Commission on Women recommends to use the term sex um, as used in Senate Bill Number 2093 and House Bill Number 7722 instead of gender, which is uh, the one the term used in Senate Bill 440. Um, lastly, on the inclusion of the phrase or characteristics of her sex, whether actual or presumed, on uh, as used in House Bill Number 7722, we wish to clarify the meaning of characteristics of their sex. Um, sexual characteristics pertains to reproductive organs or physical characteristics. And if the authors pertain to personal identity of the employee as characterized by her manner of clothing, inclination, or behavior, in relation to masculine or feminine conventions, then we just recommend that this be replaced with the more commonly used term gender identity instead of characteristics of their sex. So we will just um, uh, send our official uh, position paper, your uh, honor, in relation to uh, the proposed legislative measure. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Ma'am Rebecca Bailosis. Um, can I just uh, pose some questions to uh, Attorney uh, Robert Maranilla, sir? Uh, sa ngayon po, how many uh, of your uh, member companies allow leaves other than uh, mandated by law? I, I was told who, kasi there are some uh, uh, companies who would allow more than uh, five days of uh, service uh, incentive leave to its employees. Is that correct, Your Honor? That's correct, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Chairman, I don't have the data right now. The data is with our um, research department. Um, however, our position is based on, uh, um, on gathering the, uh, the data you know, from our, mostly those who are in the medium and large enterprises are those uh, companies that would have more than five um, service incentives, Mr. Chairman. And, and this uh, additional leaves, uh, the results, sir, uh, of uh, CBAs po ba ito, or were this company initiated? Um, it is um, initiated by both uh, the CBAs and also some of them are management prerogative also, Mr. Chairman. And then what would be uh, the adverse effect, if any, sir, no, uh, on, on, on the business of employers if an increase in service incentive leave is uh, granted. Mr. Chairman, um, just put uh, just to put on record that the 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 Senate bills provide for exemption for the micro establishments. Yes. Um, so so let's um, we are particularly concerned now about the uh, small and medium enterprises. Um, in a nutshell, Mr. Chairman. Those who can afford normally would provide for additional service incentive leaves. Um, we are worried about the timing of this because of uh, because of the pandemic that um, 
small and uh, medium enterprises who have suffered because of the COVID-19 would have a hard time to 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 comply with this, Mr. Chair. Yes, uh, thank you. As uh, mentioned earlier in the uh, uh, beginning of this uh, hearing, we made mention about it, sir, and uh, we are fully aware of the sensitivity and uh, the timing of this uh, particular measure. And that's why we, we also wanted to hear from you and the uh, ECOP and the uh, PCCI. But uh, it's also good that, that there's an opportunity for us to discuss and uh, talk about these issues. Perhaps, sir, uh, the next question would be, how, 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 do you, um, uh, how do you categorize the leaves taken by employees who cannot uh, physically report to work because they were uh, uh, required to be quarantined at home? Uh, pa do you deduct the days uh, they were absent from their service incentive uh, leaves? Pag ganun, ho? Mr. Chairman, this is... Uh... Um, sensitive topic. No? Um, some employers um, would um, would bank on the no work, no pay uh, principle. Yes, um, basic of principle. course. For for the Department of Labor and Employment, um, if you are forced not to go to work, then you should be paid. So, meron pong mga ganung uh, uh, argument. Um, I'm, I'm just being frank with you, Mr. Chairman. But, yes, please. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll ask the, the Dole family yes, if, if yeah. they can also comment later on. No? Sige, oh, Attorney Robert. So, yun lang po, Mr. Chairman. Um, but uh, I, I, I can't answer in behalf of the uh, entire Philippine employers. But uh, the, the basic rule is if you, you don't go to work, you don't get paid. However, if the employer doesn't want you to go to work um medyo ibang usapan na po yun. um but there's also a gray area there because the employer is also protecting his uh, his business and his co-workers yeah and it's also protecting the the fellow employees if the other employee doesn't want to be vaccinated or is exposed so so mr chairman marami pong discussions dito maybe the dollar can shed light more light yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, i thought it, it would be uh, great to uh, to look into this and talk about it for example what if their 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 absence is more than five days or if they if they uh, had already used up their uh, uh sils can, can, can we have an, an answer from uh, the Department of Labor and Employment? Say, siyempre, unfair din naman doon sa worker because he wanted to work but he was just told na hindi, kailangan mo i-quarantine, may quarantine protocols and now you cannot work. And then, he dededak pala itong uh, mga days mo uh, na, that you're absent from your uh, service incentive leaves. Can we hear from Dole? Can anyone from Dole uh, give us a uh, uh, clarification on this particular issue? Mr. Chair? Yes? Mr. Chair, I'm Nicanor Bond from the Bureau of Working Conditions. Yes, uh, Sir Nicanor, you're recognized, please. Yes, please. Mr. Chair, with regard to the issue on SIL, uh, if uh, particularly during this pandemic, so we have no law regarding uh, quarantine. So we are encouraging companies that if they have existing leaves, they have leave credits, we encourage companies to allow their workers to utilize their existing leaves like SIL, vacation leave, sick leave, so that during the time that they are uh, on a forced leave or, or they are on a lockdown, they would be able to have income in the meantime. However, if the the lead the lead uh, credits that they have have been exhausted, they will be on a no work no pay, Mr. Chair. Wow. Okay, I mean, it's it's unfortunate, no? Parang ang 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 hirap ang hirap pa intindihin. Dahil, for instance, uh, Sir Nicanor, me being a senator, ha? Huh? Uh, ma-expose lang kunyari sa isang uh, nagka-COVID 
and I would be quarantined for a while. Quarantine protocols. And ilang beses na ho nangyari sa akin, parang three or four times na ho, na I have to be separated from my kids, from my family. Naisip ko lang ho, kung ganun, ganun din sa mga workers. Tapos, pag naubos mo na pala yung SILs mo, eh, wala na. No work, no pay na. A ang hirap. But I also understand uh, yung uh, situation of our employers. And uh, uh, it's just that uh, it's unfortunate, no? It's unfortunate na na ito, pag, pag ikaw na chambahan ng ganito, and I, I, I wouldn't even use the word chamba because it is perhaps common to our workers na, 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 na ma-expose ng ganito at uh, mag-undergo sa ganitong uh, situation. I, I just hope we, have, we, have, we are studying at least or uh, doing something about this, uh, Sir Bon. And um, again, um, I, I, I hope we'll be able to, to, to find ways on how to be able to help. Perhaps the government can step in. Nandiyan yung tupad, nandiyan yung uh, programa ng uh, dole uh, na po pwede nating uh, saluhin yung ating uh, mga workers na talagang apektado because of this pandemic. Yes, Mr. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm about to say that uh, uh, we are trying to monitor uh, the displaced workers affected by the pandemic so that later on, we'll be able to, to, to come up with the, uh, appropriate interventions like providing uh, them assistance, financial assistance like the, the Bayanihan uh, that we have right now and also possible livelihood or other assistance that the government, particularly Dole, may will be able to, to provide them, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Another question that I'd like to raise, Attorney uh, Robert, no? In a work from home uh, setup or flexible uh, working arrangements, how do employees avail of their leaves? Pagkaganon ho. Were there instances wherein uh, yung employees were prevented to avail of their leaves? Yes, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Yeah, good question. Mr. Chairman, it depends with the um, rules and regulations or the company policy of the established um some some, some companies they isang text lang po pwede na mag leave some companies naman um they require um one day notice or let's say a proof of medical certificate mr chair na that proves that um you will be taking a leave mga ganun mga ganun po mr chairman yeah. so and I think some some work from home arrangements are also paired with reduced holidays, uh, work days. I mean, uh, work hours, mga, mga ganun huba and or uh, rotation programs. Depende on no, sa peculiarities ng ng trabaho. Yes, Mr. Chairman. But yeah, but ganun din. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we'd like to hear from our uh, labor groups uh, uh, for their uh, position on these uh, three measures that uh, we are discussing. Can we hear from uh, TUCP? Um, Karina, yung KMU, we, we heard about their position. Uh, Attorney Sani, Matula, please, uh, you're recognized, sir. Now, uh, we, we support the initiative to increase the service incentive leave. Actually, at present, uh, the, the organized uh, workers had a higher, higher incentive, uh, service incentive leave. We have uh, vacation leave and sick leave uh, for 30 days, 40 days. Uh, the concern is those who have no unions. At present, the five days uh, serving, service incentive leave masyadong mababa. Tayo at ang pinakakulilat sa, sa ASEAN, sa... sa service incentive leave na. At uh, sa kasalukuyan naman, eh, kung eh, siyempre, kung sumobra dito sa proposal na 10 days, papalagay ko, nakocover na yan ng iba pang mga sa birthday leave siguro, sa sa wedding leave, kung mayroong ganyang leave sa, na binibigay ng kumpanya. Pero sa kasalukuyan, yung experience ng trade unions, mas mataas sa 5 days ang ang uh, ang uh, ang uh, nasa na experience ng mga manggagawa. At saka we support the the initiative on the expansion of the non-discrimination 
uh, the uh, proposal and we wholly support those uh, proposal. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Attorney uh, Matula. Uh, before we recognize uh, Attorney uh, Luis Corral, uh, we'd like to put on record uh, lang po ni Senator Bong Revilla to uh, insert this uh, uh, sponsorship speech on the uh, uh, different measures that we are uh, deliberating uh, uh, today. Uh, we give the floor to Attorney uh, Luis Corral of CUCP. Sir, you're recognized. You're, you're in, uh, uh, you're muted, uh, sir. So all the three measures. Yes, there. We, we, are, wholeheartedly, Please proceed, we, sir. Are, we are wholeheartedly behind the three measures. On the matter of the service incentives leave, I placed in the chat box uh, a comparison of uh, the service incentives leaves in other ASEAN countries. Cambodia is 18 days. Uh, and then we have, uh, uh, I think, uh, higher, num uh, higher period of uh, days for our uh, neighbors in Vietnam, uh, in uh, Indonesia, Thailand, uh, Brunei, Myanmar, ranging from uh, seven days to 15 days. So uh, these are progressive um, moves by these countries to ensure that their workers' safety and health are ensured. And uh, there are sufficient studies that uh, show sure. that uh, increased service incentives leave translate to higher productivity. So we fully support that. The arguments of ECOP uh, that it will affect productivity are, we feel, uh, uh, countered by other facts such as the that productivity is uh, affected in the Philippines because of the lack of power supply, the fact that we have the highest power and electricity costs in Asia. We have to bring that power supply cost, which is at eight pesos per kilowatt hour, at least to the level of four to six pesos per kilowatt hour. And we hope the PCCI and ECOP will help the UCP and the Congress and uh, our executive branch in ensuring that power costs go down. The second, of course, is uh, the supply chains were gravely affected during the lockdown, and this affected many of the locators. And we really have to reestablish our markets abroad to the EU and the United States and other countries with which we trade, where we have uh, general systems and preferences uh, uh, access. So we hope that also PCCI and ECOP will help ensure that uh, our international obligations, we remind our government, uh, will be uh, complied with, uh, including um, uh, prohibition of the worst forms of child labor. Uh, the third, of course, is uh, the continuing problem of graft and corruption, the political noise leading to the 2022 elections. So those are the real problems that affect productivity. Because prior to the pandemic, even studies of the World Bank and the ADB showed that Philippine worker productivity was on the go and was very high. Uh, we note that during the uh, administration of the late President Noy Noy Aquino, Pinoy hit a 6.9% GDP target. And that was because of higher worker productivity and we have long complained that worker productivity does not translate and has not been translated by our wage boards to an increase in salaries in the minimum wage. So with that, uh, we feel that the service incentive leaves package of 10 days would, would really go a long way to addressing uh, the need for uh, uh, workers' health and safety to be prioritized, and I'm sure ECOP and PCCI will agree with that. And uh, that uh, there are enough measures, such as the proposed productivity incentives law, uh, which are going to be put in place and which are being implemented even through uh, in, in the initial uh, efforts of the DOL, which, which will ensure that productivity remains high. So it's not a question of additional vacations. It's really a question of 
linking productivity and the safety and health of workers as uh, as one on the matter sir of the bill for uh, the prohibition of more acts of discrimination against women while we have become more gender sensitive and the philippine commission on women have said that the philippines is among the top 20 most gender sensitive country as measured uh, there's still a need to ensure that uh, women are protected and that there be no prohibition uh, that there be no discrimination uh, based on gender uh, religion or even political beliefs so so we we further advocate your honors that uh, consideration by the senate committee also be expanded to ratification of the ilo convention on 190 which is uh, uh, provide acts of violence in the workplace including sexual harassment so with so, that your honors uh, we fully uh, stand by the bills on the last measure, Your Honor, on the Barangay Registry, uh, it might be necessary to provide language in the bill that would link the registry system with the existing peso that was uh, explained by the DOLE. Uh, there should be a seamless uh, way by which the registry of skills of workers would be matched with the capacity to place these workers in uh, industries or new establishments as our economy recovers. So, Your Honors, uh, we, we congratulate the Senate Committee for uh, proposing uh, these very progressive measures uh, for workers and uh, the economy. Thank you, Your Honors. Thank you. Thank you very much, Attorney Luis Corral of uh, TUCP and uh, we also would like to spread into the records that uh, a while ago we have with us uh, virtually present is the congressman from the UCP, Congressman uh, Raymond Mendoza. Thank you, sir, for, for joining us. Pasensya na ho, and if you would uh, notice, wala na ho akong video dito sa computer ko at 1% na lang ho, mawawala na po. <laughs> but uh, anyway, maraming salamat po sa bawat isa. Sa dole lang ho, one last uh, uh uh, data that we would would ask yung uh, complaints so uh, yung how many complaints yung uh, uh, meron tayo against employers na na file nitong uh, past uh, five years due to the uh, commission of uh, prohibited acts under article 137 of the labor code and uh, ano yung mga nature of uh, these complaints uh, hindi na lang po namin sa dole at uh, perhaps yung isang tanong na uh, how is DOLE guided in resolving uh, cases of this nature? No, uh, There is no paragraph imputing criminal liability on the Commission of Prohibited Acts under 137 eh, ng uh, ating uh, code. No? Unlike sa 135, uh, klaro po doon. Sa 137, wala po. Eh. So, gusto lang natin malaman yung... Uh, uh, papaano ginag-guide ang DOLE in resolving uh, cases of uh, this nature. So yun lang po at uh, sa bawat isa po na naririto, nais kong magpasalamat sa ating mga resource persons, mga kasamahan natin sa Senado, mga employers organization, uh, at mga labor groups sa pagbibigay po ninyo ng oras at aktibong partisipasyon upang uh, mapag-usapan po natin ang mga mahalagang measures patungkol sa proteksyon na ating mga media workers at mga manggagawa sa production industry, pati na rin po ang mga measures patungkol sa pagpapabuti ng pangkalahatang kalagayan ng ating mga manggagawang Pilipino. We reiterate that um, your Committee on Labor, Employment, and Human Resources Development will remain uh, your reliable partner in ensuring the safety and welfare of our workers, especially during this unprecedented uh, pandemic. We look forward to discussing the following issues during uh, our TWG and or perhaps uh, if we call for another uh, hearing because uh, we will be uh, um, collaborating and uh, consulting the members of uh, this committee as raised by Senator Aimee earlier, yung scope ng media workers bill, specifically on the inclusion of government media workers and all workers in the media and production industry, regardless of uh, the type of engagement. Now, yung security of uh, tenure of the said workers, the rights of freelancers, 
the liabilities of media outfits under this law, the alignment of this bill with OSH law, which we have uh, worked on during last Congress, and the cost implications of this bill as raised by private sector and the uh, stakeholders. We also would like to further study the proposed measures which aim to uh, enhance the lives of our workers, such as the initiative of having a grassroots database of professionals and skilled workers, the elimination of discrimination against women, and the increase in the number of service incentive leave, taking into consideration the realities of the pandemic that we are uh, facing. So muli sa bawat isa na nakiparticipate at nakasama po natin, bumigay na ho yung computer ko kung nakita nyo ho. Uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat at uh, pagpalain po tayong lahat ng ating Panginoong Diyos. This committee is a uh, this committee hearing is hereby adjourned and muli maraming salamat and may God bless us all. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Thank you very much Mr. Thank Chair. Thank you.